like a bro, bring it back, that's what's up. <laughs> Welcome to Menominee Falls Indians football. Tonight's game between your Menominee Falls Indians and the Brookfield East Spartans. Tonight's game being brought to you by Falls Cable Access Channel 14. Bill Hintz, my partner here this evening. Hey, Bill, tonight's a big game for Menominee Falls. Uh, Menominee Falls is 4-1 in conference, tied with Brookfield Central and Marquette. So tonight, if they can get a W, would be a big step towards the Greater Metro Conference Championship. Absolutely, and I think they feel that they've got a right to be in this position right now. They control their own destiny. They win tonight. That sets up a perfect final between Marquette and them at home right here on the same field. So it's a pretty exciting night for, uh, for definitely anybody who's connected to Menominee Falls. Well, let's talk a little bit about the keys to the game this evening for Menominee Falls as well as a Brookfield Central, Bill. You know, uh, you mentioned Marquette's coming up and uh, we see the falls, but there's the keys to the game for uh, Menominee Falls. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, without a doubt, D'Amico is the key. He does all the passing. He does most of the running. He is their number one receiver. I mean, I, I, I'm surprised he doesn't throw the ball and catch it himself. Uh, he's, he's really out, outstanding. Very, very, very good athlete. Um, and then turnovers, we just simply cannot have that. Every time that the Falls has had a situation where they could put a team away and they haven't, it's been because they had these little pesky turnovers. So they definitely need to do that. And then as far as scoring in the red zone, they, you know, when they get down in that 20-yard and in, they've got to do it. They've got to put points on the board and preferably uh, you know, when, when they can get in the, with, with a touchdown as opposed to a field goal. And then big players make big plays. I, I totally agree with your uh, analysis there. Uh, we've got some really outstanding players. Uh, Almonte is incredible. Um, um, I think Burkhardt Burk Burk is awesome this year, so they've got some great players. All right, so we're just we'll get to the keys of the game for the uh, Brookfield East Spartans in just a moment. But right now we're going to go to PA announcer Jerry Missling and the national anthem for tonight's game here, Menominee Falls in Brookfield East in the Greater Conference Showdown here this evening. And our brave men and women in the armed forces, especially those serving overseas and away from their friends and families. Please rise, remove your hats, and be respectful for the singing of our national anthem, which will be sung by Courtney Nielsen, Oshie Zong, and Janessa McGee.
national anthem, Bill, we talked to you, we mentioned a uh, piece of the game, we talked about D'Amico being everything, but Menominee Falls has some keys, but so does Brookfield East have some keys. So they have a young gentleman by the name of Christian Amante that Menominee Falls uh, kind of leads the pack. So there you go. The keys to the game for Brookfield, Spartans. Okay, if they could keep El Monte to, let's say, 100 or less, um, they might have a good, a good chance. I think El Monte is that much of a factor in the game. Uh, the control of the line of offense, I, you know, clearly, whosoever offense is on tonight will have the great advantage. I, I kind of put down in my own notes here, the bottom line is who can stop the other team's offense. So it's all about the defense, really. And then field position, that's key. If you can get you know, good kickoff returns, punt returns, and get good position, that's going to help uh, Brookfield East quite a bit. And then D'Amico, you're absolutely right. It must have a big game. They're that dependent. He is that key to it. And yet, interestingly enough, there's a lot of other teams that have played them and they haven't been able to stop them. So, you know, we've got to have a good game plan. I'm sure that our coaches have been working real hard on limiting his effectiveness, maybe trying to take away the run, if not the pass, and uh, see what they can do. But East is a, is a formidable... Matter of fact, I don't know if you remember, but uh, Brookfield East was considered to be one of the top contenders in the conference before in the preseason, and they were thought to be kind of there. And then they lost early to Waukesha West, and then they lost to Marquette in a really a, a huge heartbreaker for them. And, um, you know, that's just, it's, it's been a tough road. And then they lost to their crosstown rival, Brookfield Central. So that's been a real difficult road. And I know Tom Swiddle. He and I started coaching together at Dominican many, many years ago. He's a great coach, and he always comes up with a great game plan. So I think it's going to be a great game tonight. Well, I think this is going to come down probably maybe the last possession, as you mentioned. So, so Menominee Falls will receive. So we're going to have Christian Amante and Bryce McCurdy. McMurdy, and then number 16 um, for the... Spartans, Connor Allen to kick off. So we're underway here on a beautiful Friday night in Menominee Falls. Amante takes it in the end zone, so it'll be a touchback, Bill. So the Falls will take out the first possession here starting at the 20-yard line. Yep, absolutely. And, you know, those are one of those things in when it gets kicked into the end zone in high school, they don't have a lot of options. And uh, so it, uh, anybody who can kick the ball that far, that is the reward. So they're on their 20-yard line. All right, so quarterback... Uh, senior Adam Beckhart will lead the Indians out of the huddle here. And we've got a wide angle here. we got five, five receivers in the first pattern here. Beckhart's in the gun to start at motion. Hands off to McCurdy. I uh, just, you know, right there on that one, Bill. I don't know if you saw that one, but, you know, the block was kind of outside. You should Got to kick him inside, yeah, absolutely. And yet, look at the speed. You know, McCurdy, Mc, McMurty, um, definitely came around fast, but boy, they smelled it out. You can, like I said, the the one thing I know about them is they've got great preparation, and uh, they know about end arounds and different kinds of plays that Falls have been using throughout the entire season. Well, uh, East probably at a four and three overall, and three and two in the Greater Metro probably is the the best team with that record. All right, so handoff out here right to. Uh, Christian Amante breaks the tackle just for a first down there. Yeah, and it was uh, snapped directly to him, if I'm not mistaken, so a little bit of the pistol uh, offense there where they're giving it right to the running back, not even uh, taking any chance with the handoff. Well, Bill, in some of these games where you have two evenly matched teams like we have this evening, you know, it's a wrinkle here or there. There's something they may have not seen year to date so far that may make the difference in a big play from that standpoint. So here again, we've got five... Guys wide, El Monte in motion, going to take the handoff, going out wide. So nice run on first downs, about six yards. Well, and it looks like East is very disciplined, though. They're not uh, over pursuing. They're not cutting. They're not doing the the wrong play on this. They understand that these kind of wide plays. I think what they're trying to do is establish that they can go wide because if you notice, they haven't really done much up the middle yet. Well, so far, you know what I've seen is. You know, the similar, different formations, uh, trying to catch East off guard there. That's a snap right to Almonte, but he goes right down, so he's going to be a big loss there of about seven or eight yards. So it's going to it's going to create a um, third and a little over ten yards to go here. So not good ball handling on that, so it puts Falls in a tough situation here uh, early in this drive. And, and I would give Christian Almonte a, a little bit of credit there. You know, he's well coached, and I think the coach has told him that if there's ever that kind of fumble thing, let's not try to get heroic. Let's not try to pick it up and run with it and everything else because that's when you could lose it. And he definitely fell on it to make sure that we retain possession. 
All right, so Veckhardt's in the gun here again with third and long. Motion coming to his left. It's a handoff to McMurdy. Turns it up inside. If he can break that tackle, it's going to be first down, I think, here, Bill. Very close. Interesting, just kind of philosophically, I mean, to be doing those kind of, oh, oh, I don't know, I, I don't want to call them end arounds, but they're, in some ways they're, that's what they are. They're spreading them wide, and then they're having one guy come back in motion and getting the ball in that. So they must have seen something in their research on Brookfield East that maybe they thought they were susceptible. That was probably the first play that I thought looked really good, uh, and they got, some, they got some mileage out of it. Falls in tier, we're doing a nice job up front. So again, we got five wide, Vecard in the gun, Almonte. Just going to hand it off to him just the other way. He turns it upside, outside. Speedster, Amante. Oh, that, oh that, that's a, be careful with that one a little bit late. But Christian Amante is, you know, leading the Indians in offense. He's got 1,127 rushing yards, averaging a little over 160 yards a game, Bill. So he and D'Amico are just two outstanding football players. Well, and you know what's interesting, too, is that El Monte actually averages seven point yards every time he touches the ball. I mean, if you think about it, just keep giving him the ball and you're going to keep getting first downs, you know? All right, so it's second down and five on the 47 yard line for the Indians. Veckart takes it. We're going to hand it right up the middle to El Monte. Going to be just a little bit short. It's going to be third down and short here, just on the. Uh, it's on the other side of the 50-yard line, so third and short for the Indians. Yeah, they uh, they got a little physical on the inside. That's the first inside play, and you saw Almonte's helmet came off in the uh, tussle there, so they uh, have to bring in a little substitution, Boyd Sansoni. All right, so it's going to be actually, they marked, officials marked it back a little bit, so it's going to be a third and a long one here. Bunch formation, Veckhardt taking the sh snap, Snaps it right to Samson, but he, he had the ball, but then he lost it, and Brookfield East is going to recover. That's big. That's big. And look at, you know, look at the position of where they got the ball. They're looking at the 40-yard line. You mentioned it before in the, in the pregame talk. We, you know, clearly field position is great and the turnover factor, and that's, uh, that's big. Well, that's two really kind of mishandles in the first possession of right. those direct snaps, you know, going from the center right to one of the backs here. So Menominee Falls defense is going to have to kind of stiffen up here. So Brookfield East will take the ball on the 40-yard line with a short field here in the early in the first quarter. And I would anticipate Brookfield East is going to do a lot of passing, uh, try to be quicker. They don't really want to get into a, a lot of Miko pitches walking. out to number seven. He's got a lot of running room there on the first play. Takes it all the way down to about the 15-yard line. That was Santiago Lloyd with a nice run on the first play. Yeah, that was really nice. No, nice wide run. Good blocking on the inside. Contained everybody. And then uh, Santiago Boyd, uh, Lloyd did a nice job of getting out there and getting it up the field. All right, so it's first and 10 on the 15 for the Spartans. D'Amico takes it up. It's stuffed right up there in the middle by the interior line of the Indians. Kendall Walker in there and so Zach D'Amico gets the ball and then you see he was running the option there. So he faked the handoff, kept it, decided to move up, up right up the middle of the field and uh, falls right at well and, and made, it, made the tackle right away. Alright, so it's kind of a no huddle offense. You've seen a lot of that in today's in all college level as well as professional Brookfield East D'Amico throws it out here to number four it's a quick s pass and he's kind of tackled there by number two Featon nice job Will Sutton on the reception in that case Bill I know we're probably going to see this on this angle but that's almost a backwards pass right. there you know from our angle we can't see but you got to be careful with that yeah, I agree yeah because if that wouldn't have been handled properly that could have been considered a fumble right alright so a, a big possession here for Falls defense third down and five D'Amico uh oh it's a busted play he's gonna get sacked he's gonna get sacked big play by the Falls defense here so it's gonna be a that field goal big. situation I think for the uh, Spartans here that yeah. was definitely big you know the fact that I think they were anticipating they were gonna be able to get in and look at the way he handles that ball it makes me a little nervous Zach D'Amico very confident he's got his one hand on the ball as he's going down trying to desperately make one last play on there 
All right, Connor Allen in to try a field goal here from the I'm about the 28-yard line, so it'll be a 38-yard attempt. It's up. It's plenty of plenty of leg, and it looks to be no good. Wide right, so the false defense stands and no, cut a break one on cut a break on that one. Yes, yeah, absolutely. You know, and when you think about it, you know, it was a big break that they got the ball in such great field position, but the fact that they came away with no points, really big for the Falls. Excellent job on the defensive end in that first series. Well, maybe Menominee Falls had a little bit of jitters there in that first possession. You know, this is a big game, obviously. You know, we talked earlier in the pregame. They're battling for the Greater Metro Conference Championship, and I think the last one they had outright was in 2004. Don't quote me on that one, but I think it was in that time frame. So, Beckhart. Hands it off. Oh, right up the middle. Fakes in there. He's got plenty of running room. Adam Veckhart, yeah. nice run. Yeah. Faked, the, faked the ball to... Faked uh, everybody out on that one. Yeah, Adam kept the ball. Pushed it upfield. Got a nice gain on that one. First down. Well, Veckhart's no slouch in the running game. He's averaging 82.6 yards per game. So, kind of, they thought everybody, Almonte was going to get the ball. He fakes the ball to him and takes it right up the gut. So, a first down, a Menominee falls. We've yeah. got six minutes, 20 seconds to go here in the first quarter of this Greater Metro matchup. McMurtry out here, single coverage down here to our to the left. Pitch out here to Lamonte. He's got some runners. He's got it outside there. Uh, we've got a penalty flag. Looks like it's going to be a block in the back, possibly, or holding on number 10. Yeah, you know, and, and Almonte's got great speed. You can kind of tell Almonte seems to be a little upset. There's a lot of pushing and shoving, and afterwards, remember, he got his helmet ripped off and everything else. Really important that uh, players kind of keep their head in these kind of big games type of thing. You don't want to get uh, penalties for unsportsmanlike conduct or even an ejection if you get into any kind of physical altercation. Well, Bill, obviously, uh, Almonte and Beckhart kind of lead the team from an offensive standpoint. Um, we've got some other key weapons. The offensive line obviously makes those blocks for those two guys. But maybe East is trying to get in the head a little bit yeah, of, oh yeah. of uh, Almonte here early and kind of test his uh, toughness mentally. He's just got to shake that off, as you say, and then uh, play the game. So that's a, a big loss of uh, holding there. So it's first down in a country mile here for the Indians. Almonte right up the middle, but stuffed for a very short gain there. Yeah, you know, and that's what they must have seen in the tapes. They were seeing that it doesn't seem like there's as much open up the middle and everything else, um, but that's why they were trying to test the outside. You know, could they turn the corner? Can Almonte get to that corner and then turn it up? And um, still looks like there's a lot of uh, intensity out there at this particular point. And to your point, you know, I was looking at the stats on Almonte. 11:27, uh, as you mentioned, rushing, 143 yards uh, receiving. Uh, that's 1,270 all-purpose yards. Think about that. And then you look at Veckart, who has actually 578 passing, 458 rushing, a total of 1,036 yards. Both of them great stats, wonderful situation. And, and so that's a one-two punch that I think is going to be tough for anybody. All right, so Bill, on that one we had a, looks like an a uh, penalty, a five-yard penalty on the uh, Spartans, so we'll move the Indians five yards farther up the field towards the uh, end zone here, so it's going to be a first down and about 18 yards to go. Veckhardt in the gun, Almonte in motion, fakes it to Almonte, and Veckhardt's got an opening out there. Nice run by Adam Veckhardt for a gain of about 10 yards, so it's going to bring up second down and about eight with yeah. five minutes to go here early in this battle. Of I'm, I'm kind of getting the impression that what they're trying to do is, you know, outguess the defense because I think they know that they're going to be watching Almonte and yet Veckhardt has very wisely decided that he's going to fake that handoff and then he's going to take and he's gotten a couple of nice runs. All right, so motion here this way. Veckhardt again. Wide open. He's got a huge run there. Covers up the ball across the midfield line. So Adam Veckhardt. So in this situation, Bill, it's kind of like a read option. You know, if they don't take take the uh, if they take Almonte, then Veckhardt keeps it and pushes it right up there. So two very nice gains there, back to back. And and I actually and I actually think that what's going on there too is I think the the coaches who are up in the booth have actually seen that and they are kind of telling the sideline, hey, make sure Beckhart knows they're all going for the first fake. 
All right, direct snap to Almonte. He turns it up the field, and he just stuffed right there by, by number 54 of the that's Connie Cal Durney, and he just stopped him in his tracks there. You know, this particular camera angle is giving us a great shot of all the intensity on the field. You'll notice both sides are pushing and shoving and grabbing face masks and everything else and stuff. And quite honestly, this is one of those situations where you kind of hope that the officials, you know, get in there and get them to stop doing that stuff and just get them to play football. And uh, if they let it go and if they don't start uh, throwing uh, flags, it's, it's going to get worse as the game goes on. Well, if East can, you know, could happen to pull off a win here and then uh, Falls maybe beat Marquette next week, then they could be in a tie, you know, with two losses. So they think they're still probably in the running here for the conference championship as well. Another big lick by... There's a, there's a physical hitting going on out there, Bill, tonight. And a lot of late hitting going on yeah. out there. I mean, it's just... This is very interesting. They're... Well, and, and, you know, whenever I used to coach against other teams, the teams that you always were most worried about were the teams that had nothing to lose. I mean, you know, they, they really feel like, hey, let's go all out, let's give it everything we got, let's see if we can pull an upset here, because, as you said, that moves them up in the position of that. I think it probably will still be that whoever wins the conference is only going to have one loss, but at least they get into second place if they can get one somebody else with a second loss. Well, I'm curious to see when Coach Offensive Coordinator Jamie Doyle does a little fake and then a little play action and then throws it up up the field here with uh, to uh, one of the uh, tight ends or uh, receivers for a long bomb here but you know because those kids are coming up early so we'll see it's going to be fourth down and about nine so it's going to bring in um, Anthony Russo number 16 I think we're going to be in a punting formation here so we talked about field position Bill so be important that uh, Russo can get a kick here at kind of the sideline and pin uh, East back in their own territory and we'll see what we've got here good shot also to see all the young men wearing the pink on there so in support of uh, breast cancer month October Russo a nice kick there it's going to be fielded by East right down there it's nice coverage by the Indians but he breaks the tackle Oh, he's still stuck there by number 40 for the Indians. Very good tackle by Ty Weber. So pinned back deep in their own territory. Oh, we have a replay on this one. I'd love to see if this is actually going to be a clip in the back or a push in the back. Yeah, it's a push in the back there. Yeah, number two. <laughs> number two, clip number two. Feet in there, but uh, Weber was able to make that tackle about on the, I think it's about the six-yard line. That's, I mean, he was, he was dancing on the goal line there trying to get the heck out of there. So great right. coverage by the punt return team. Field position here for uh, the Indians in their favor. So if they can pin the Spartans back here, get back possession, take over some nice control here. D'Amico hands it off out wide. Number four. That's Will Sutton. Comes out here. Takes it wide. Good pursuit. Three guys on the tackle. Would have been nice if they could have gotten a little bit closer because they got a good gain on that one. Yep, Simcock on the tackle with a couple other Indians. So second down and short here for the Spartans. About on the 13-yard line. Seven-yard gain. You got to love You gotta love the number, 19. A little Johnny Unitas action, right? Oh, there's Zach D'Amico. Gets enough, I think, for a first down there. Simcock makes another tackle, number 35. Yeah, it's almost like from a defensive standpoint, you've got to have at least one guy who's doing nothing but shadowing um, their quarterback. I mean, there's no doubt at all he's the key to everything, and if they can do anything to slow D'Amico down, they're going to really benefit from it. But it's kind of hard to devote somebody to that. You, you want to play them honest. You want to make sure that they, you're not going to let them get a fast uh, pa uh, you know, pass or you know, a wide run or something just because of that. All right, so it's very close to the first down, so the officials are bringing in the chain gang here. See if we've got a first down. There's a shot of Coach John Baker uh, really leading the Indians here to a 6-1 and one overall record, 4-1, and one, and tied for the conference we mentioned here earlier. So there's Coach Baker. Yeah, John's got uh, great coaching credentials, has done a real nice job. In his first year, of course, gets all the way to the state finals and has a very close game with Marquette in, the, in that year. All right, so it didn't quite make the first down, so it's 
third down and short here. Bill, my guess is D'Amico is going to get the ball some way or shape or the form here. <laughs> That's like pretty wise, yeah. <laughs> nope, right up the middle, nope. Number five, that's Gerald Childs for the East to get their first down. So a quick little handoff right up the middle and punched it out for a first down for the Spartans. So it'll be first and ten at the 20. be interesting to kind of compare the sizes of the lines. It, it just looks to me like Brookfield East line is fast, but I don't think they're that big and bulky. Yeah, the right guard doesn't look to be that big at all. There's a shot of D'Amico. He's handed off. Nope. Pulls it out. He's tackled inside there by a host of Indians. 52, I think, in on the tackle for Menominee Falls. That was Justin Olson. Second and nine here for the Spartans on the 21 yard line. You'll notice that the Spartans get their plays called in from the sidelines. They go right to their positions and get a call they all have wristbands on and here we go and no huddle offense this could be the last play of the first quarter D'Amico's looking to pass nope he's throwing it up there Let's see if he can get it it's deflected out nice job by number 27 for the Menominee Falls that's Brett, Brett Morrell nice play so yeah. that's going to well, he just he got himself turned just in time to get his hands up and knock that one away very very smart move on Brett's part yeah, we'll see that here on the replay. D'Amico's looking to his left, but then rolls to the right, kind of gives the signal to go a little bit deep, lobs it up. Turns Roll there. turns and hits him in the helmet. Nice play. So it's going to be yeah. third and nine here. Six seconds to go here in the first period. Yeah, you young D-backs out there, get that head turned around, get your hands up. That's a great way to D'Amico defend that. rolling to his left, throwing it deep, a bomb. Let's see what it's out there. It's overshot. So that'll that'll be, I think, the end of the first quarter. Defended by number Jake two, Feeton. Jake Feeton. Yeah. So it does a nice job. So it's going to be fourth and long. So Falls does a nice job here, Bill, to, to hold them. So we're going to end the you know the first quarter scoreless at 0-0. So we talked about the offense and these dynamic Almonte and Beckhart and D'Amico, but we end the first quarter 0-0. Right. I think, and I think what that reflects is that both teams, from a defensive standpoint, did their homework. They've got a good game plan. They're definitely ready to go. We've got, on this shot there, we've got Jim, Jim Jesuits, former coach of the Indians here for many, many years. 11 conference championships, to my knowledge. Um, so, very, very proud man and He's being honored here this evening as one of the greatest coaches in Menominee Falls history, uh, Jim Jesuits. Very emotional for Jim. Thanks to all his hard work and the community has been a great asset to the Falls community for many, many years. Might have some of his grandkids there in the back maybe. Mm -hmm. All right, so again, it's the... Uh, Game being brought to you by Falls Cable Access Channel 14. Got our fine crew here. That's to our right. We've got Blake, Charles, Mike, Gordon, all the guys down there. And Harry Stetzel, of course, our producer in the booth. So, all right, so it's going to be fourth and nine. So, Brookfield East, number nine, number, excuse me, number 16. Connor Allen's going to kick to McMurdy and Almonte, they do kick to Almonte. He's going to bring it our way. He's got a little bit of room out here if he can cut that up. It's a nice tackle there. Uh, just couldn't get around that corner, but Falls takes over in great field position on the 45-yard line. Yeah. Showed his speed, but I thought great defense on the part of Brookfield East. Did a nice job of make sure, making sure he didn't break containment. All right, so we've got the start of the second quarter here. Adam Beckhart's going to bring his team up here to the line. Coach Jamie Doyle makes a last-minute adjustment there on, from the offense. Offensive line so far. Bill doing a nice job in the trenches. We got a little, I'm, gonna call, I'm just calling this the bunch formation. Beckhart in the gun. Snapped it right. There's a reverse to McMurdy. Turns it up. And he's, it's a nice job by the Brookfield East defense. Yeah, you know, and again, I'm looking at the, the size of the Brookfield East defenders. Again, 
some height, but not a lot of thickness, and uh, and yet they seem to be light and fast and able to recover, and they're not fooled by a lot of the misdirection. Well, on that one, Bill, I wasn't sure, but McMurdy turned that one up. He saw an opening there that kind of closed quickly, but might have been a little room outside on that one. The, out, the guy was kind of blocking down. So, all right, so it's going to be second and seven for the Indians. Almonte in motion to his right. Vekar takes the snap. It's going to be a short little screen, sc screen pass, but Daniel Dalkey, number 81, just flat out dropped it. Yeah. Got to, got to keep your hands on those and, and hold, pull them in. Well, in a lot of cases, Bill, on that one, he's peeking, I think, looking to see if somebody's going to hit yes, him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, when you're coming across the middle, I don't care if you're, you know, as big as Dalkey is, 6'4 and 202. You know, it, it doesn't make any difference. You don't really want to get uh, surprised across the middle. All right, so a big play here for the Falls, third down and seven here. They got great field position. Let's see if they can capitalize it here early in the second quarter. Almonte in motion to the left, snap to Veckart, going back to pass. He's, oh, that's right there. Is nice job by the safety for the East number nine. That's Bradley Karstens. Came up, delivered a hit, so Falls can't move the ball, and they were forced to punt. Yeah, it almost seemed like there was a little confusion on the route to run. He was, looked to me like he was doing a down and out, and it looked more like the pass was kind of a flag. So I'm not exactly sure uh, what happened on that one. All right, so, you know, so far, Bill, this game, uh, Russo back to punt, you know, there's been some field position. Falls has had good field position. East has had, but neither team has been able to capitalize early in this game. So Russo to punt. Oh, East gets some nice penetration here. We'll see what that ball does. It's, oh, he's picked up kind of. Uh oh, no. T oh, he was down. The officials got him down there. Number 14 for the East. That's Chad Coolender. I think, yeah, they got him down. Yeah, not right when he caught it, but yeah, a little bit ahead. Yeah. I think he knew his knee was down, and then he, people started coming. He said, I'm going to get out of here because I don't want to get drilled. <laughs> Yeah, isn't it? Uh, you and I both played some football, and you know that sometimes it's just about self-preservation. You know, just kind of. Yeah, you're <laughs> setting the guy's setting ah, wide open. All right, so Zach D'Amico here for the East Spartans. Possession on the 15-yard line. D'Amico takes it around the end. Falls defense does a nice job there. Number 35 again. He's around the ball all the time. Tyler Simcock, Bill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely good, uh, good pursuit, and but they are picking up some yardage, and they just haven't been able to break a big one yet. All right, so second and seven here for East on about the 19-yard line. Beautiful evening here in the Falls for Friday night football. Handoff, short gain there, a couple yards. So it's going to be a third down, two or three here for East. Third down and short. So we'll see if the Falls defense can shut them down and try to get good field position here again. I think based on the amount of time that's left in the second quarter, if they could get a stop here, they're going to have plenty of time to make a nice long drive and a score. Right now it looks like you know a turnover here down in, you know, somewhere down in field deep in their opponent's position here would create something, a scoring opportunity, but Falls third and short here. D'Amico going back to pass is rolling out to the right. He's got room to run out there. Very quick. That's Breaks it long yard up just up to midfield there. So there you saw the explosive Zach D'Amico. And that's the big play that we, we, we kind of talked about before. You don't want to have that happen. Um, what I happen to notice on that particular play, Tyler Simcock actually lost his footing, slipped and fell, and so he wasn't able to get out and contain him. So he was able to get that big gain all the way to the 50-yard line. All right, so first and 10 on the 50-yard line right at midfield here for East. Simcock pitches it out here wide. Oh, that's got to be a holding right there on number four. Uh, the coaches are yelling there because number 14 for the Indians, uh, Zach Marole was getting held, it looked like to me, but no yellow hankies on the, on the field. Yeah, and if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, I think there's only been one penalty called. A little offsides or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah five-yard offsides. I, it would seem like there's more yellow opportunities. All right, so first and ten. Hands off to number seven. That's Sam Santiago Lloyd with a nice run there on first down for the Spartans. So the Spartans have got a little momentum here with that big play from D'Amico. Yeah. So they're down on the 35-yard line here. 
with 8 minutes, 49 seconds to go here in the second period of this Greater Metro Showdown. You mentioned this before. I'm, I just absolutely love it. All of the hands people on the offense, they've all got those arm wrists telling them all the play. There's D'Amico. He's going to take it to the house there, bust through there. So there's that big play from Zach D'Amico on a 35-yard run to put the Spartans up 6 to nothing here in the second quarter. Two big runs. Unbelievable. This one about 35 yard. He just read it. He saw the opening, took it, went right up the middle. Nobody could recover. All right, so two plays from D'Amico. D'Amico, about, probably about 70 yards on those two runs. So puts East up here in the uh, second quarter. So we're going to have the extra point attempt coming. So it's going to be important here for the Falls offense to answer on this possession here. Right. So kick is up and good, so Spartans take a 7-0 lead here with 8.30 to go in the second quarter. Yeah, I mean, the very thing, it seems like all of a sudden we got into the second quarter and all the things that they were able to do both uh, defensively and in, in the first quarter, Falls just wasn't able to do it. They weren't able to contain, um, you know, D'Amico. He seemed to be able to see the field well. There were lots of gaps, lots of openings. And then, of course, our offense still hasn't really uh, gotten on track yet to, to do what it's been doing in the last few games. You know, both of those plays were I, I was almost like busted plays, weren't they, Bill? I mean, he rolls out, he doesn't find something, so he just takes off and uses his, ath his athletic ability and makes something out of nothing, and uh, that really hurt the Indians there on that particular drive. So, as we mentioned, it's going to be key that they get a good return here, get good field position, and then answer and uh, get this game that we're expecting to see, you know, a close battle here going down to the, to the wire here. On a beautiful Friday night, Menominee Falls. I can't believe the weather we've had here lately. It's uh, a couple weeks of 70-degree weather, and you can't beat it. And John Baker, obviously not real happy about this particular one, and I think you're right. He, what he's looking for is let's respond, let's, uh, let's get right back in it. All right, so it's McMurdy back as well as El Monte. To kick off for the Spartans will be Connor Allen. The last kickoff, he boomed it in the end zone, so didn't give El Monte a chance. Where do, you, where do you find baby blue football shoes? I'm guessing those are soccer shoes, but I'm not <laughs> sure. Yeah, it went, slid through there, so it's, I think it's into the end zone. So Falls is going to have to march the 80 yards to the end zone. Yeah, this is... Um this is the one area that's uh, a challenge for you and I, since we have a pole that's kind of just to our left, <laughs> and we kind of kind of depend on the uh, the video there. Yeah, there. There we go. Now we're we're on the camera now. So Isn't this awesome that we're in this very expensive, fancy studio? Well, you know, Falls Cable Access, yeah. Channel 14. <laughs> yep. You know, uh, support of the community is able to put us into this nice, famous coaches back there. We got famous players back there. ESPN's finest studios. Yeah. All right, so we're ready back. Enough about talking about our fancy studio. It's, it's football time here, so the Indians first and ten on the 20-yard line. Beckhart in the gun. Hands it off on the left side to El Monte. He's got some room. You know, we talk about the big plays. You know, that's the thing that the Spartans have to do is eliminate those big plays from Beckhart or El Monte. Quick handoff to El Monte. Turns it, sees the gap, goes right up there, makes at least one person miss. It's a nice gain for a first down. You know, before we were talking, I was doing the comparison of El Monte and Beckhart and what they offer. You know, both of them are on 1,000 yards for their, for their offense, but D'Amico actually gives 1,778 yards <laughs> when you combine those two. So D'Amico is something. All right, so it's first and 10 for the Indians here. Hands it right up the middle to El Monte. Does a spin. He's busting through there. It's a nice gain by Christian El Monte. So you can see why he averages almost seven yards a carry. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, and I think what's interesting too is that what they're doing is he gets hit, but then he does that spin move. And I think if you don't wrap him up right away, get your hands on him and pull him in, I think he's going to fly. I think he's going to go. Well, El Monte is short and stout, you know, so yeah. you, you know, he's low to the ground, so if you don't get below him, he's able to keep those feet churning and get some extra yards. So yeah. five foot six, 170 pounds, but man, he's built. All right, so it's second down and two on the 45. Falls Mountain, a nice drive here. Kind of answer that. Veckhart's going to turn it up there, and he's going to get just enough right in front of us. It looks like it's going to be a first down on the 
43-yard line. We'll see. Veckart fakes it up to Lamonte. Yeah, nice, so. nice little step right up there, and he can he can tell where he's got to get to, and um, they close that gap awful quickly, but enough for the first down. Oh, now that, you know. I didn't. I don't I, know what line they're looking I at. Didn't like Boy, that looks like a first down. I didn't like the <laughs> spot there at all. I mean, uh, Veckart clearly looked like he was over the line, and uh, now it's. You know, third and third and inches. So I'd actually, I'd actually request a measurement. A yeah, measurement, I, yeah. Well, Veckart Vec again, the gun. You know, and Almonte, both of them looking for it. Veckart's going to take it right up the middle. It's going to. There's no question. That's a first down. So, Almonte leading the way. So it'll be first and ten for the Indians on the 40-yard line. We'll see that right here. Hey, everybody's blocking, and Veckart's just going to make sure it happens. Number 33 for the uh, East, trying to strip that ball there. So Veckart does a very nice job of protecting the ball and, and securing the first down. All right, so it's first and 10 on the 40-yard line here. Veckart in the gun. Almonte. Veckart fakes it up there. He's got a lot of running room. It's another first down for the Indians. So that double threat of Adam Veckart and Christian Almonte. East just kind of confused. Who do I take here? Right. Well, and, and East, what they're doing, watch, they've got a guy that's going to definitely tackle El Monte every single time, <laughs> but they have nobody that's actually tackling Veckard every time until they get 10 yards. All right. So nice job of reading the, the play there by Adam Veckard. So it's going to be first and 10, just inside the 30. So, Bill, the falls is so far has kind of marched this down here and trying to get into to, uh the end zone to try to tie this thing up here in the second quarter. Monte in motion. Veckart takes it right up the middle. Veckart, short, nice tackle by the East defender. Short gain by Adam Veckart. Nice, uh, able to, that, that particular play, you can see him kind of read what's there, and he can tell whether he wants to hand it off to Almonte or not. Because they have the feeling that if, they, if he sees them adjust, and not take El Monte, he's going to get the ball and get a chance to just and take off. All, of all right, so second down and nine for the Indians. Line, so. Spread formation, three to the right, two to the left. McMurdy in motion. Veckhardt's going to hand it to him. He's got some room if he can get to the outside there. Just a short gain of a couple of yards, so a nice job by the East defense to string that out. Well, and what I like about the, the guys in motion getting the ball is that they get up ahead of steam. The problem is it's not fooling anybody, and Brookfield East is standing there waiting, and, and when you can't turn that corner, even though you've got a full head of steam going, that means they're well prepared to make sure that that's not going to go anywhere on that particular play. All right, so it's a big play here in this drive, Bill. It's third down and seven for the Indians. On about the 27-yard line. So keep this drive alive. They need a first down. So Veckart's going to drop back to pass. He's looking for a pass. He's got Dulkey out there. Dulkey's going to turn it up, see if he can rumble up there. And uh, looks like it's enough for a Menominee Falls first down. So a big pitch and catch there from Veckart to Dulkey. There you go. Dulkey's got it. Makes one guy miss. And then picks up another four yards. Nice, uh, nice move by Dulkey. Nice little spin move there by Daniel Dulkey. All right, so it's the drive still alive here. So it's first and ten on the 19. Beckhart joined in the backfield by. Oh, it's just a little reverse. They got some blockers out in front. See if McMurdy. Now oh, that's a nice job by closing by number 33 for the Spartans. That's Vince Chimborski. Looked better than the beginning right there, but yeah. And you saw there were three Brookfield East defenders on the one side ready to take the guy who was, was going to get the handoff, El Monte, and then instead they reversed it, and yet they still had guys on the weak side. All right, so we've got a mental error here. It looks like Falls has had a penalty here. It's going to take them back a little bit. We'll see if we can get the call. Wow. Chop block. So one of the, it looks like the interior lineman possibly. Second penalty of the night. Caught a guy a little bit <laughs> low, so it's going to take them back. Is that a 15-yard penalty? It looks like it is, yeah. So it's going to be, wow, 33-yard line. So it's first in a country mile here for the Indians. So uh, they were down ready to march and punch in the end zone. Now they've got their work cut out here with first down and looks like about 25 yards. Okay, McMurdy in motion. Okay, get out there, young man. He's got some room there. He's going to get that all back almost. 
So, nice play on first down there, Bill. Yeah, very nice. Uh, clearly, Bryce was, McMurtry was definitely ready. He's in motion again, quick handoff, boom. He gives it to him, and then he's able to turn the corner. And for whatever reason, this time there wasn't anybody there. There wasn't anybody, you know, kind of waiting for this particular action. So, whatever they did, they faked it well, and this time, big gain for the Falls. All right, so the chain gang's a little bit confused over on that sideline, but it's second down with about six yards to go, so Falls does a nice job to get it back into manageable territory here to try to secure a first down here with four minutes, 46 seconds. That cart takes it right up the middle, but that's just a whole host of Spartans to shut that down. Uh, I think that time Al Monte wasn't covered up. We'll see here. Yeah, Veckhart kept it, did the fake off, fake handoff to El Monte. All, line. All right, so it's third down and five. So um, what do you think here, Bill? I mean, depending on how much they get in there, if it's fourth and short, they probably do go for it. But to say they don't get much same, do the, does Coach John Baker go for a field goal at this point? Oh, I, yeah, I, I mean, but I think more importantly, this particular play, I think they're going to have to look at passing. All right, here's Veckhart's. Touching up the middle. He's got a first down. He's still rumbling in there. He's going to get into the end zone. Wow. Touchdown. What a run by Adam Beckhart here. That's an outstanding run. He was rumbling, kind of falling down, kept his feet churning. So touchdown, Indians. With well, go ahead. And I, and I think Beckhart, you know, there he showed his athleticism. He's able to take it. He reads it. He sees the gap. He goes right in there. He makes this person miss, pushes that guy down, and then he's close enough to the goal line where he can just stretch it out and go. Nice run by senior Adam Beckhart. That guy reminds me of number 12 that I used to know. <laughs> All right, nice job by Adam Beckhart. So Russo in the kick. So see if we can get this game tied up. Russo puts it up and in. So we've got a tie ball game here, 7-7. Nominee Falls Indians, Brookfield East Spartans with four minutes, two seconds to go here in this greater Metro Conference matchup. There you go. All right, so let's take a look. We talked about the greater Metro Conference. And we mentioned Menominee Falls, Brookfield Central, and Marquette all tied atop at 4-1. and one. Oh, here. here we go. There we go. Okay, so Falls and Brookfield Central currently are tied. Brookfield, East, Brookfield um, excuse me, Marquette. Actually, I've got Marquette at 4-1. So are, I, I think these are overall records here. Oh, the overalls. Okay, yeah. So in, in the conference, it is a three-way tie. Marquette, Brookfield, and the Falls are at 4-1, and one, as you mentioned. East and Hamilton are at 3-2. And, and really, they're, those guys are knocking at the door as far as that goes. And from a greater Metro standpoint, you know, it's still anybody's. you got, theoretically, you still got five teams out of the eight that are still in it in some yeah. way, shape, or form. That's, a, that's not a testament to how great the greater Metro is in terms of football. You're exactly right. It's one of the top conferences in southeastern Wisconsin here. All right, so Russo to kick off here for the Indians. Russo kicks a nice kick kind of deep there. It's going to be fielded by the Spartans on about the 15-yard line. He's getting a nice return there, and the fall's got to put him down, so he returns it all the way up to the 36-yard line. The ball is loose. Let's see what we got here. The official's coming in. Maybe he's down. Yep, possession, Brookfield East. So. Well, and we didn't even get a chance to talk about it, but the the rankings in terms of the state for the Division Ones, you're actually looking at Homestead one, Arrowhead two, Greendale three. Uh, I don't even know Kenosha Indian Kenosha Trail. Indian Trail. Uh, yeah, I, I can't imagine that they're going to be in the same uh, category as Arrowhead and Homestead. But uh, but Falls is number seven and Central is number eight. So definitely Greater Metro very well respected and represented. All right, D'Amico pitches outside there. Nice pitch and catch there, at number seven for that Santiago Lloyd. So uh, nice gain on first down, about six yards. So it's tight. It, yeah, it's so difficult to play these options because you do have to work on containment. If two guys are not containing, or one guy of the two is not containing, they're going to get outside and they're going to get some yards. All right, so it's going to be really important here for the Falls to keep East out of the end zone here or keep any big plays. That's a pitch out wide, and he's stuffed. That's a great play by number two. Jake Featon came up hard and just leveled the guy. You know, they anticipated that when Jake Featon was definitely ready for that. He saw him going wide. There he is, steps right up, boom, takes his legs out, and he's down. Nice tackle by Jake Featon, number two. So it's going to be...
third down and about six. So we're going to get officials timeout. I'm not sure for what. No, we're resetting the clock. And I, don't, and I don't know about you, Brett, but as far as I'm concerned, I'd put three guys to do nothing but follow D'Amico. D'Amico. <laughs> Two fi 256 here left in the second period here. The big play, third down and six. If the falls can stop, them, they'll get a chance to get the ball back. D'Amico back to pass. He's got. He's running. Oh, here's those situations. There he goes, and he's going to be just, just. Oh, that's going to be no. close. It depends on where they. That uh, guy's got it right <laughs> here at the line. It, yeah. but <laughs> it's going to be fourth and inches. So if they don't have this one marked, D'Amico does a nice job there. Just, geez, he carries that ball loosely back there. Yeah. Now. Yeah, you'd like to think if you can get close enough to him, you can maybe knock that baby away, but he's so doggone fast. All right, again, so you can hear our PA announcer, Jerry Missling, giving us a pep for Falls Cable Access, Channel 14. I don't know if, you, if you saw that on the last shot there, the communication system, they got two guys, at least two guys, that are using, like, uh, signs. You see the numbers Art, there, yeah. the three on there and stuff like that. So they got these other guys involved to call plays. They're actually, so that's how they're getting it in from the sideline. Isn't that interesting? All right, so it's going to be the measurements in there, so it's fourth and three inches. So right at almost to midfield, so does, up oh, now they're punting. That's a, okay, Coach Tom Swiddle says, hey, we're not going to gamble and give false position here. You think that's a good play? Well, you know, I get two minutes to go, I suppose. Well, maybe maybe I try to draw them off sides, Bill. Yeah, at least, if nothing else. I mean, yeah. then you can kick in another five yards uh, back if you have to. But All right, so we've got back for the Indians, Christian Amante. So we'll see if they're going to actually punt. Yep, they do snap it. They are punting it. So nice job. Fielded by McMurdy, it looks like. Brings it up to just short of the 30-yard line. So, Falls is going to have two minutes to go here in the second quarter. So, again, you know, that's probably the, the smart play, you know, in terms of field position. We talked about that, you know. So, Falls is now going to march the ball in two minutes, you know, almost. And, and, and to that point, you know, um, Falls hasn't had the big gains like we've actually seen with D'Amico. So I think they're playing against uh, the fact that in two minutes they're not going to give up that big, big, long play for the Falls. Well, we'll see if a, a big player can make a big play here with two minutes to go for the Indians. All right, so Veckhart in the gun. Amante to his left. McMurdy takes it around the end. Turns it up there. He's got a little bit of room. He's rumbling. He's going. Can he take it all the way? That's a big play by a big player, baby. He's going to take it all the way. Touchdown, Menominee Falls. There you go. Well, we talked about it. You know, that was a good cue. I didn't, but so, so now it doesn't look like such a good coaching decision. <laughs> no, he, he uh, goes from hero to goal. But here we are on the yeah. replay. Again, same, same action where they're coming from the weak side, getting the head full head of steam. Great blocking on the outside there. And he sees a gap, and then he's able to run away from it. He's got great breakaway speed. Once he's in the secondary, nobody's going to catch him. So, great job. Bryce McMurdy hits pay dirt for the Indians to take a 13-7 lead here. Kick is up by Russo, and it gets good. So, the Indians score quickly in the first play of, I guess that was about a 72-yarder. Yeah, and I was just looking at the clock. I'm thinking maybe about 17 seconds all total for the, so oh, for the punt and everything. <laughs> 202, so, yeah. so that's a big play by a big player there by the Indians. So now, so let's see if that really mentally can be devastating to the East. You know, you know they need if they can come back and get a decent drive, but they go into the locker room and they go, man, we let them score on the last play. But then the right. other side of the coin, the Indians are upbeat and ready to go. So let's see if the coverage unit can get down there, get good coverage and hold them, and then we would go in at halftime 14-7. And everybody talks about that in, 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 in uh, sports, especially high school sports. It's about momentum. It's about what do you do when you get momentum. Can you keep it going? And I think you'd like to think that this kickoff team is going to get all fired up, and hopefully if there's a good solid kick, and then the guys pursue, and they contain, and then they keep them deep down there, they can all get fired up about that and everything else. And then you go into that halftime feeling really good about both your offense and your defense and your situation with special teams. All right, so nice play by McMurdy. So Russo's going to kick off here. Kicks it off. Back to number 14 for the 
Spartans, and he is just leveled. He is hit big stick by number, catch that, number 32. Yeah. Wow. Will Rocher. Will Rocher, a knockout blow. Whoa, that fires everybody up. Look at Baker fired up on it. Here we go. We'll see it on replay. Just watch this one. Yeah, this is what we were looking for, some kind of a strong response by this kickoff team, and boom, just takes them down. Unbelievable. Nice play by number 32, Will Rocher. So it gives the falls momentum here, so let's make sure we don't get anything behind you here, gentlemen. So D'Amico's rolling to his right. Going to pass in there, and looks like it uh, gets a little bit of the little ground, so incomplete. You know, Bill, occasionally you see these situations where they start to, you know, two, under two minutes, they throw a couple passes, they're incomplete, and all of a sudden they're punting again to Falls, and we get the ball here with, you know, a couple minutes or, you know, a minute to go. Right, exactly. All right, so we'll see what Falls does here, if they can get a stop in short yeah. yards, if Falls will call a timeout, maybe. And, and I was... All right, so it's second and ten for... Spartans, D'Amico rolling out. It's going to pass there. It's a nice pitch and catch to number four for the Spartans. That's Will Sutton. So it's going to be a first down for the Spartans there. So nice, nice job by D'Amico. Now where does he actually catch this? He's actually, I would say, 36, 37. Do you see where they're putting him? They put it at the 40. <laughs> this is very generous. D'Amico's going to run that thing. He's going to pass it up. It's going to be caught out there. But it looks like it's incomplete. He's out of bounds. He tried desperately to do, you know, a real nice catch right on that sideline, and he actually came down with part of his foot on the out of bounds line. And I was going to call it a Jordy Nelson catch. If you've been watching oh. those catches he's oh. been making, that guy's unbelievable. So great all right, concentration. So very important for the Falls defense here to hold East, you know, from getting any points. So they go in to half with momentum. We've got a minute, 17 seconds to go. Second down and 10 from the 40-yard line. D'Amico in the shotgun. Going back to pass. Rolls to his right. Going to get a little pressure. It's going to be thrown outside. But this can't be caught out there by number four. Again, the Will Sutton's over his head. So it's going to be third and long. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I think what sometimes happens with players as, as impressive, I guess you would say, with the, as D'Amico, I think sometimes when the other offensive players are suddenly expected to catch a ball or expected to run with it and everything else, they're kind of shocked. <laughs> you know, they're, they weren't expecting that somebody was going to actually throw them the ball or hand off the ball or something like that. And, uh, you know, that is the one negative about having maybe one player that really can do so many things. Let's see if... The Falls defense can come up. There's D'Amico on the run. He's going to be stopped short. Let's we'll see if Falls will. Russo comes up and sticks him. See if Falls gets a timeout there. They do to stop the clock here with just a little over a minute to go here in the first half. So because forcing East to punt. All right, there you go, Bill. We've got some of the passing leaders for both teams. There you go. Yeah, the yeah passing oh, for this first. This is for this the season. Is for yep. the season. Okay, I'm looking at this and going 87 yards for passing on D'Amico. I'm thinking he's got just a little bit more than that, but uh, <laughs> yes. And then McMurtry, 192 yards uh, receiving. So he's uh, actually listed, I think, as the number one receiver, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, Almonte, as you mentioned before, 1127. So, yep. yeah. Z Zach D'Amico, obviously. Uh, is, you know, their threat, he's running and passing. D'Amico, you know, has 787 yards passing alone, 991 yards rushing. So, you know, you mentioned that, you know. So he combines for almost over 250 total yards for them. So the Falls done a nice job shutting him down. So let's see uh, if the Falls can get a nice return. So we've got El Monte and McMurdy back for the Rice McMurtry, McMurtry. Keep butchering that name a little bit. It's going to go, looks like, out of bounds. McMurtree. All right, so good shot of Jamie Doyle there, talking to his quarterback, Adam Becker. I think that's Gordon Kirchhoff down there on the field. And I can find camera guys. Is that Gordon down there, guys? Gordon's oh, yeah. down there, yeah. There's a good shot of him there. You can see him on the, oh, bottom of my alley. Fine crew from Falls Cable Access Channel 14. 
doing a great job here bringing you Falls football here on a beautiful Friday night in Menominee Falls. So it's going to be first and 10 on the 25. We've got just over uh, 55.2 seconds to go in the first half. Falls leading 14-7. Beckhart's going to take that one up the middle. He's going to slide through a crease. So Falls being a little bit conservative here. They you know, they're up in the lead. They don't want to, you know, give possession back there. So takes the handoff. Beckhart up the middle. A lot of hitting going on there. All right, so let's we'll see if Falls can uh, keep this thing going. They're, they're content, I think, to let it run down. There's just under 30 seconds to go. You know, and that is one of the challenges. Whenever you have an offense that has a quarterback that gives you both passing as well as running yardage, I always think, and this is true of the pros, college as well as high school, you run the risk that, you know, your quarterback's going to take a beating, especially when he, when he does the run. All right, so we end the first half here in this greater Metro Conference matchup. Menominee Falls 14, Riffield East Spartans 7. So, Bill, we made it out to be a, a well-fought battle, and we saw a heck of a football game here in the first half. Your thoughts on the first half? Yeah, I mean, I think when, you, when I really think of the first half, I think of it more as a 7-7, you know, pretty much a balanced attack, kind of, you know, right there and everything else. And then what the Falls did was they just took advantage of that one opportunity, that one big mistake by Brookfield East, and scored that extra touchdown with very little time left in that second quarter. And I think that right now has been the difference. But I think both teams, in my opinion, came in with great game plans. You're not seeing an explosion of points. Every point, every yard seems to be well fought out. Uh, and I don't think it's going to be easy. I think second half, um, one of the things that I looked at in, the, in, that, in that second half is the fact that the fourth quarter, um, unfortunately, the false has been outscored 30 to 48. And I worry that, that they've got to have a big enough third quarter, and they usually do. They come out strong. The false comes out strong in that third quarter. And then if they can score a bunch of points, I think that'll be awesome. But if they can't score a bunch of points, they got to make sure that that fourth quarter isn't like what it's been in other, in other games. Well, it was a heck of a football game here in the first half, so we're going to get some halftime entertainment. I think the uh, Athletic Hall of Fame is going to have a ceremony at halftime. But we're going to be back here in a few minutes with the first half highlights. So we go into break here. Uh, Menominee Falls leading 14-7. So we'll be back in just a few minutes. Hall of Fame. We have some older inductees out there, or former inductees, including Bob Wolf, 
Bob Schweiger, Terry Thomas, Bob Hessler, and Jim Jesper. Let's have a nice hand for our previous induction. WSUC Player of the Week and was a WSUC Conference Player of the Year finalist. In 1980, he stayed on as an assistant coach at UWC. He was both assistant football coach and strength coach from 1990 to 1996 at Monopoly Falls High School. He was activities as a book director at Falls from 1995 to 2011. Jim has been an assistant coach at Arrowhead High School and has coached five state championship football games, which resulted in two championships. In 2006, he was named Class Game Assistant Coach of the Year. More importantly at Arrowhead, he has won numerous teaching awards, including National Teacher of the Year, Medalist Teacher of the Year, National Honor Society Teacher of the Year, and made a who's who of American Teachers. Let's have a nice hand for Jim Hessler, who I think might be busy tonight. <laughs> Up next, we have Nicole Gross Johnson, Class of 1990. In volleyball, Nicole started and learned all four years and was team captain three of those four years, including her sophomore year. She was second team all conference in 1987 and first team in 1988 and 1989. As team MVP in 1988, she was a Walkshire Freedom Player of the Week and led the Indians to the state tournament. In softball, she led her three more years. Nicole was team captain two years and won the Indian Spirit Award in 1990. She was second team all conference in 1988 and 1989. First team in 1990, the year of the Indians won the Braveland Conference Championship. Upon graduation, Nicole earned a four-year scholarship to play volleyball at UW Parkside. Let's have a nice hand for Nicole Rose Johnson, class of 1990. Michael McKenna, class of 1993. In 1992, Mike ran cross country was first team all conference, made a walk in general Central area team, and was a WIA state qualifier. Mike was a four-time national cycling champion and a national record holder at 200 and 2,000 meters. Mike was selected by the U.S. Cycling Federation as the best 16-year-old all-around rider in the United States. For three years, he was selected to attend the United States Olympic Development Team Camps in Colorado Springs. Mike has won 11 national medals in 20 disciplines and won over 20 program races. He raced professionally for the Midwest Airlines Cycling Team in 1994 through 1997 and competed in four national championships. Mike is currently competing in the late Masters race. Mike is the Nicolay High School girls track and field coach. His team was state runner up in 2005 and he was named 2005 Walking Central Coach of the Year. He has coached nine state championships and coached well over 20 stadium podium finishes. Let's have a nice hand for Michael McKenna, class of 1992. We have a familiar face, Dave Petrov, coach and athletic director of Menominee Falls. Dave began his coaching career in California. He was head wrestling assistant football coach at Belfar, head wrestling and assistant coach at Costa Mesa, and assistant coach at Golden West Huntington Beach. That's the college, Golden West College. At Menominee Falls North, Dave was an assistant wrestling coach in 1974 and 75. He was a varsity football coach from 1975 to 1982, winning the conference championship in 1981. The same year, he was voted co-football coach of the year. Dave was community relations director for the school district from 1998 to 2001. He co coordinated marketing for two successful school districts, referendums. Dave was the Falls athletic director from 2001 to 2012. 
He was a co-founder of the Athletic Hall of Fame. He was invited to return to the junior senior homecoming flag football game. He won District 7 80 of the Year Award in 2007. He was a founding member of the Booster Cup Capital Improvement Committee, which raised $1.5 million to upgrade many things, including a new press box, a new track, new scoreboard, new scoreboards in the gym, new sound system, volleyball standards, upgraded the rec a weight room. We don't have all night all the things he did, so we're going to stop right there. Uh, Dave also has a numerous list of volunteer activities, including being former Optimus president and been on numerous Rotary Club and a bunch of other clubs. He's done a terrific job. Let's have a big hand for our friend, former athletic director, Coach and A.B. Dave Petra. Dave wrote all those things for me to say about him, just in case you want. Uh, Tom Wolf, class of 1992. Tom was a two-year letter winner in basketball. In 1991, he made second-team all Braveland Conference, third-team all-area Waukesha County, and CNI All-Suburban Honorable Mention. In 1992, as team captain, he was first-team of all Braveland Conference, second-team all-area Waukesha County, and made the Waukee Journal Conference Coaches All-Star Team. Tom was also a two-year letter winner in football. He won numerous awards in 1991. He made first team all Raymond Conference, first team all area Waukesha County, and winner of the Monopoly Falls Coaches Most Improvement Award. Tom was honorable mention all state and was a member of the Wisconsin High School All Star Shrine Bowl game. Let's have a nice hand for Tom Wolf, 1992, and all our inductees and former inductees. At this time, we will turn it over to the band. Right. Welcome back to Menominee Falls Football and Falls Cable Access of this Greater Metro Conference matchup between the Menominee Falls Indians and the Brookfield East Spartans. So at half, it's Menominee Falls 14, Brookfield East 7. Bill, we saw a heck of a ball game there. Some big plays by both teams, uh, big scores, which we talked about there early in uh, the, the uh, pregame. So let's take a look at some of the first half highlights and some of those big plays. This is Beckard at quarterback. That was the shortest play that we've had ever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we, we'll get those big plays back for you here in a second. But uh, again, Menominee Falls tied with the conference, 4-1 uh, and one with Marquette and Brookfield Central. So tonight's game is a big key, Bill, for the Indians. If they can take win this game, we've still got another half to play. They go 5-1, five, five and one, and then Marquette comes into town next weekend. Here's the uh, big plays of the game. Okay, yeah, so definitely we've got D'Amico running right up the center there. About a 50 or so uh, yard touchdown pass right from the middle there. Excellent play by them. Just no recovery on our part. Veckhart, nice, tough, tough play. Gets knocked around but able to get in there. Relatively short distance, but tough, tough yardage uh, that close to the, to the goal line. And here's the big McMurtry play. He's actually got six rushes in this first half at 113 yards, and this play in particular added to that total rather dramatically, almost 70-something yards probably on this play alone. So, so far in the first half, that big play by Bryce McMurtry is the difference there. Falls leading 14-7. to seven. So let's talk a little bit about what we talked about a second ago. Falls Central and Marquette tied 4-1. and one. Falls can come away with the win. Then Marquette comes in next week. 
for the showdown for the conference championship. Yeah, and at this particular point, you know, they've all won enough games, so they're going to probably make the playoffs. So that really isn't even the issue. And quite honestly, if they can pull off a win tonight, they're definitely in. Brookfield East is, is even in. So it's it's one of those really, it's like they've got a lot to gain, so they're not just playing this game out. They really want to take this game. They want to win this game. And as I said before, I know Swiddle. Swiddle's a great coach and highly motivating and uh, very well prepared. And in our situation, we don't want to stumble here. We're in position, but you got to win this game to make the Marquette game mean everything. So, not to put any pressure on anybody, but uh, this is a big game for both. Probably a little bit bigger game for us. Well, let's take a look at, you know, at the beginning of the game, we did the keys to the game for each team. If we can get those up there, we're going to take a look and see, you know, how each team is stacking up against those keys here, you, right here for the fall. So, control D'Amico, how they do? Well, I mean, you know, he got 70 yards in, his, in, in the first half in terms of rushing yards. He had nine rushes for 70 yards. Not bad, but, I mean, you know, you don't want to give anybody 70 yards in the first half, but he is kind of the key there, and that's why they, they did that. Eliminate the turnovers. As you know, they've had a couple of turnovers there. A little scary, giving, a, giving it uh, to Brookfield East and make them think that they're still in the in the ball ballgame uh, quite a, quite frequently. Uh, scoring the red zone, they haven't been in the red zone very much, you know. Uh, the one play they got was they were they scored that one from, you know, more than 40 yards out. So it wasn't like they were in 20 yards. And you would think that we'd be able to get into that red zone just a little bit more. But as you pointed out at the very beginning, big players make big plays, and that's what we saw tonight. We've got McMurtry, as you mentioned, for uh, six rushes, 113 yards, and a touchdown. Veckart with 12 rushes at 80 yards. And El Monte has nine rushes, but only 30 yards rushing. So you think they're you think they're maybe keying on him just a little bit? Well, you know, that's a, the that's a situation. Now, here's the keys to the game that we limit El Monte, the big plays. Obviously, you just mentioned yeah. they did that. Mm -hmm. um, they can, uh, control a lot line of scrimmage could have been a, a toss-up. Field position has been okay, but D'Amico must have a big game, and Falls has done a nice job of controlling him so far here, but you mentioned the one thing. El Monte, nine carries, uh, 30 yards. It just takes one play for that big player to make that big play, so right. in any, any second, on any handoff, any catch, he can make a turn of touchdown quickly, so That'll be a key that they continue to focus on controlling Christian Amante. And, and the one time that the Spartans uh, early in the game got that great field position when when the Falls uh, had the turnover, um, they weren't able to capitalize. Remember, they missed the, the the relatively short field goal. So, and they've got quite a field goal kicker. You and I were watching that at halftime. This guy was knocking them in from what did you say? 50, 53, 53 52, yards. 53 so. yards out. So. Uh, you don't you don't want to get them anywhere close to the what would be the 40 what are that, it's about their 43 yard line or all right whatever. so we're just about ready here for the kickoff here we have the halftime athletic hall of fame from Omni Falls the inductees were Dave Petroff Tom Wolf Jim Hessler Nicole Gross Johnson and Michael McKenna and the kickoff here the second half Omni Falls kicks off to Brookfield East we're turning it back there number 11 for the Spartans that is Cole Larson so Balls pins him back there, just over, just around the 20-yard line. So the Spartans will take over possession here, first and 10 at the 20. So it's going to be a key here for the Spartans to come out and sustain a drive here early, try to get this thing knotted up here at 14. Yeah, and you know what I, I what's interesting is I haven't seen either team really put together a lot of, you know, kind of drives where it's you know five yards, 10 yards, and then a first down kind of thing and everything else. A lot of it is dependent on the big play. All right, D'Amico in the gun here. Takes the snap here. Motion hands it off to number four. Around the end, the ball is loose, and he fumbles it out of bounds. Will Sutton there, and just fumbled out of bounds. But there's the kickoff here, the second half. Nice tackle by a host of uh, Indians. A lot of pushing and shoving after the whistle. I, I you know, and I, I can tell the frustration is out there. And the trick is, you got to keep your head because you know as well as I do. Anytime it's sports, if you react or respond to someone giving you an a, an after the whistle push, you're going to be the one who's going to get the, the the flag. All right, second and eight here on the 23 yard line for East. D'Amico in the gun, motion by Sutton, hands off. Right there, a tackle by Featon and a couple other Indians for a short gain. So it's going to bring about third and about five. Also, number 30, 35 for the Indians there again. He's around the ball all the time. That's Tyler Simcock and Jake Featon. 
But I, I, I'm looking at that front line there, and those guys on Brookfield East, they're small, but they got big hearts, I'm telling you. They don't, they're don't. they not afraid of anybody. They'll take on anybody. All right, so third and five. A key play here for East early here in the second half. D'Amico's going to fake it. It's going to go back to pass. He's looking at number 87. He's got room out here to run. Let's see if he can. Yep, he delivers it out here to number four. There's his primary target. Will Sutton. Sutton leads the... Uh, Receiving yards for 259 yards. He's got 20 catches on the year and averages 51 yards per game average. Will Sutton. So he's a go to guy for D'Amico when he gets in trouble. So a first down for the Spartans. One of the few times that D'Amico actually gives the ball to someone else. All right, so it's first and 10 on the 44 yard line. D'Amico hands it off. Runners gets a little room outside. Is tackled by 52. Kind of grabbed him by the shirt. Nice yeah, tackle works. by Justin Olson for a sh short gain there on first down. Olson's got a good grip. Make sure he doesn't let go of that jersey. All right. So it's the second down and eight yards to go. Ball is on the 46-yard line. So again, Bill, you mentioned they get the signal in, play number, you know, X, Y, Z, and they run it, look at their wristbands, and we're ready to go. Motion by Sutton. Pass. D'Amico's looking to pass. He's getting some pressure by Tom Paul. He's just there to sack him, and he, he passes at the last minute, kind of a lateral pass and complete for a first down. Uh, you know, he just... <laughs> He, you know, he, he's got to have luck on his side because he looked like he was going down, but we saw that before when he did get kind of tackled and everything else. He does not want to give up, and at the last minute he just flips it, kind of like one of those Brett Favre kind of plays, you know, and then it was like, oh, my goodness, instead of a great play, loss, they get a first down, you know? Yeah. The coaches, you can maybe hear them in the background wanting the legal men downfield because it looked like D'Amico was going to be running the ball, so some of his linemen went downfield and then he passed it the last second so first and ten east on the 45 handoff right up to number seven nice tackle nice gain by the east by Santiago Lloyd for about nine yards yeah nice handoff nice and clean quick one Santiago Lloyd making nice progress and secondary has to catch him and pull him down that Will Sutton coming in motion seems to be kind of that Falls has to pay attention to him because he had some nice runs and they hand it back off to Santiago Lloyd. D'Amico quick pass out here, lateral. Uh oh, missed tackle by the Indians, but then comes up and drilled by number two, Jake Feeton. Definitely great, you know, and in misdirection, one of the few passes you were talking before about that pass possibly being a, a not a forward pass, but a backwards pass. Uh, but they completed it, so that was fine, and uh, great defense, though. All right, third and short. So East here, Bill, is doing a nice job in this first possession, second half of marching methodically down the field here, trying to tie this thing up. So Coach Swiddle is being, I'm sure, very happy with the first possession. D'Amico's rolling out to the right. He's going to pass it. Nice defense right there, and knocked out the last minute by Marol, number 27. We're at Marol. Yeah, and 28 was in there ready to help out Tom Paul as well. You know, and what I like is what's happening in that beginning first series. Whenever the offense gets the chance, you can tell the little the subtle adjustments that the offense has been making. And as I said, Swiddle has always been known as this outstanding offensive mind, and I am pretty impressed with those minor, minor adjustments that they've made, and they're marching down the field. Fourth and inches here. The fall stops him. It's a stop for Menominee Falls. They get the ball to a key play there. A fourth and about a foot, and Manami Falls just brings the house and shuts them down. Yeah, that was really amazing. They just came on all downs, all gaps were covered, and immediate contact right there. Look at that. 52 has got the first contact, Justin Olson, and then everybody else uh, decides to come in. And at the very end, the PA's to resistance is Kendall Walker, 375 pounds, making sure nobody's going anywhere. Well, big play there. The Falls defense comes up and stops them. A nice 
offensive possession for East, but the Falls comes up with it. So see if they can capitalize. This is Beckhart here right off the bat. So let's see, Bill, if a big player can make a big play and bust this thing open here early in the third quarter. So nice run on first down for Adam Beckhart for a gain of about eight yards. And, you know, it looks like, again, they're still keying on El Monte, and he can see that the defense is drawn to El Monte going wide to the, in this side, the right side of the field for them. And Beckhart sees that lane, and he's able to get, uh, attack that gap and go. All right, Beck up. That's a snap right directly to Almonte. Well, you can see right there, Bill, you know, obviously when he's in the backfield, they're keying on him. There's a couple guys. They just right after him. It's no gain. So it's third down and about one here. So it'll be a key first down attempt here, third down attempt for the Falls to keep this drive going. Third and one on the 45-yard line. I, you know, I, I, I wish we had... I know that we can't do this, but I wish we had some end zone action because I would love to see if when you're lining up behind that center, is it that obvious that it's going right to El Monte or, or that it's going to Becker? Or does, are they just snapping it back and whoever happens to be in the way of the snap <laughs> gets well, it? has got it around the end. Uh-oh, we've got a, a flag there of some type. Almonte's knocked out of bounds short of the first down. So let's see what the Zebra's got on this call here. There's a lot of hankies out there throwing kind of in the backfield. So I'm going to guess it was some type of hold or something. We'll and, see. And we haven't seen. Lock in the back. We haven't like. seen a lot of those yellow flags. I wasn't even sure that they were even available. All right. So we'll see. It's going to be, it's going to be, I think, fourth down. Well, they're not changing yet. So it's no, it's going to be third with a penalty on it. Well, they're going to take them back or are they going to make them punt here? Uh, well, they're yes. going to take them. Yeah, they're going to take them back and give them another third down. Interesting. Uh, all right, so it, was, we got, it would have been about fourth and about one, or now it's going to be fourth and a third and eleven. So, all right, we'll see if the uh, Indians come up with a big play here. Adam Beckhart, Bryce McMurtry, or Christian Almonte, or one of those other guys that are going to come up. And uh, here's Dulkey coming down our side. So let's get it out here to the big fellow, throw it up and see what he can do. All right, in the shotgun, Beckhart, third and twelve. McMurtry in motion here. He's got the ball. He's he's been covered up there, and just a host of uh, Spartans to shut that down. So it'll force a punt by the Indians. I, I get the impression that the Spartans that also did their research at halftime and realized that McMurtry has 113 yards, and they're not going to let him get another big long one. So they had about four guys keying on McMurtry. Yeah, I think when he came in motion, that's uh, one of the safeties followed him around there and was there to basically no gain on that. So it's going to be fourth. 11, so it's going to bring in Anthony Russo to punt, number 16. Number f I think number 14 back there for the Spartans. Russo kicks it off. Not a very good kick, but it's going to get a nice bounce, hopefully. And he does. So the Falls let that roll down in inside the 25-yard uh, line. So it'll be first and 10 for the Brookfield East here with 6 minutes 29 seconds to go. Um, Menominee Falls leading 14 to 7. Flat punt, but it definitely took a Falls roll. So that was uh, well played and it was hard for the uh, return man to get anything off of that. So back at the 25, and still 6 minutes to go in that third quarter. Well, field position here is key here, Bill, in this situation. So Falls upon them, put make Brookfield march it a long way. Number one, have to take a lot of time off the clock if they can eliminate big plays. Uh, if they're going to score, but Falls can pin them here and get field position. So D'Amico back in the gun, going to take it himself, and he's hit right away there by number 52, Justin Olson, and a host of other Indians, virtually just minimal gain of a yard or two. That's got to feel different for him. Usually uh, he's not used to getting hit that early. <laughs> well, Menominee Falls defense, very stout, done a nice job here this evening, limit D'Amico's uh, exposure just got to keep him under wraps because just like some of the other big players from Falls he can bust one instantly so 14-7 Falls right up the middle now again there's Kendall Walker in there just plugging that thing up so a couple yard gain so it's going to be third and long for the Spartans alright Kendall Walker does a nice job of just taking up space in there and plugging that hole that? they had three guys blocking Kendall Walker I mean, I don't know who else gets that much of attention on the defensive line other than Kendall Walker. Well, I, you know, I'm going to, you know, 
this is a compliment. I mean, he's looking like Gilbert Brown in there, taking up a lot of bodies, allowing the right. other players to come in and make the tackle. So great job by Kendall Walker. And we said there, that's a very light offensive line, so I, I suppose you have to add three of their light ones to be able to take on Kendall. Oh, that's a bucks of play there. D'Amico rolls out there, gets it out to Sutton, but down the sidelines, not a good job by the Falls defense there. That's just like, simply quick down and out. Yeah, I don't I don't know if that was as busted as it <laughs> as it looked. Maybe they just kind of Yeah, they look confused. And they're looking at those wristbands off long right there. All right, so big play by Brookfield East there and D'Amico to Sutton. So first and 10 on the 40-yard line. So Falls unable to stop them on that third down play. D'Amico back to pass again. He's getting pressure from, it looks like, number 40. That was Cal Webb. Oh, and then he, and that's, that, he's throwing that ball. Who's he throwing that ball to is what I want to know. Yeah, I, they're, uh, if we would have recovered, it might have been an interesting call, but. Uh, here we go. We'll see it. And find, find staff and crew here from Falls Cable Access. You know, he's getting pressure. Cal Weber, excuse me, Tyler Weber. And then they now they threw the flag. They, <laughs> they conferred and see if there's anybody. So intentional grounding. So that'll be a down and distance. There loss of down. Right. So that's a big play by uh, you know, Ty Weber. And what's interesting is in high school football, I would have thought maybe I'm wrong, but I would have thought that in high school football, once you got out of the pocket and you threw it like that, like they throw away in the pros. That, that that wouldn't be the call, but they talked about it, like you said, and they uh, put their meetings of the minds together and decided that it was intentional grounding. So loss of down, like you said. All right, so that's a big play there. So second and 21 here for Brookfield East. So it's marching back on the other side of the 50. So nice play by Weber and the, the other Indians there to create that negative play for East. Nico in the gun here. Drop straight back to pass. He's getting some pressure. Oh, there's a holding. They're throwing it deep. That's a wounded duck there, but he's there, number four. But they complete it. I mean, they complete it all the way down to number four, Will Sutton, the leading receiver. I don't know how that got completed as wounded as that was. I mean, that is, well, and he just threw everything. He slips a little bit there, chucks it out there. It's a big play there. See, and none of the D-backs, if you notice that, they were watching the guys, but they were not looking back. I mean, they got to know that that ball is coming in that direction. 45-yard pass with a wounded duck. We're in hunting season, so I guess maybe somebody should have shot that one out of the air. All right, so it's... Problem was, nobody was looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> Except for number four, Sutton. All right, so handoff number seven. Santiago Lloyd runs it up inside. Well, you can see the replay that's kind of tripped up there. He's at the three-yard line now, so East is, you know, at the doorstep here. So let's see if the Falls defense can have a goal line stand here or create a turnover here in this situation. You know, and if Santiago Lloyd doesn't get tripped up back there, he would have gone beyond the three-yard line. He's walking in there. Yeah, he just kind of got tripped up. I think it was a pulling lineman or something there. But anyway, so we got D'Amico taking the sh shotgun here. He's going to pass. Now maybe maybe run. That's a kind of a flick pass out there to Sutton, and it just too easy, Bill. Too easy. Nobody within 10 yards of him. Now see, and there's that's a busted uh, coverage because you got only one defender out there. That's Zach Kornberger. He's got to cover two people. There's no way that's going to work. See, there's one, there's two, and Kornberger's all by himself. All right, so somebody busted the the coverage on that. So it's going to bring in number 16 uh, for the extra point, Connor Allen. Try to tie this thing up. It nodded at 14 all with three minutes, 19 seconds to go here in the third quarter. So kick is up and it's good. So uh, Bill Brookfield East does a nice job there, marching it down there and tying this thing up. So we're all tied at 14 all. You know, and look at the time they took off the clock. Nice and organized. Kept getting good, you know, important plays. Even got penalized a little bit and still kept everything moving in the right direction in that. And they tied the ball game up. So. Give it to the to Brookfield East Spartans. They did some nice adjustments at halftime and came out strong in that third quarter and, and did that. Now, we mentioned before, too, about 
which quarter, the third or the fourth, is better for the Falls. Falls traditionally comes out strong in the third quarter, and now with only three minutes and 19 seconds left in that uh, third quarter, we're going to see how much adjustment and preparation they were able to make at halftime and see if they can uh, put some more points on the board. All right, so with three minutes to go here, it'll be uh, Christian Amante and McMurtry back to return this kick. So hopefully, uh, you know, this... This Connor Allen kid, number 16, has got a heck of a leg, and he's put them all in the end zone. We talked about at halftime he was kicking them from over 50 yards on the field goal. So let's see if Almonte or Bryce McMurtry has a chance to return this and uh, create a big play. But field position will be a key here. In high school, they're still kicking off from the 40-yard line. All right, so Allen to the kick. That's going to be deep there. It's going to be into the end zone, so not going to give him the falls a chance to kick it. So that's a nice weapon to have, Bill, a kid yeah. that can kick the field goal and start every one from the 20. And clearly that's about a 65-yard kick from uh, from the tee, so that's uh, pretty impressive. Nice leg. All right, so, you know, we were talking about this matchup is key for uh, Menominee Falls and, you know, battle for the greater Metro, but when you look at this little stat sheet, you know, the stat sheets for rushing, passing, and receiving is just cluttered, Bill, with people from Menominee Falls and Brookfield East. So it's a great testament to both teams uh, with stat leaders for the in the greater metro, not alone just their own teams. Well, and, you, and you point out about the rushing, and you see that the number one rusher is El Monte, and look who's not too far behind you. <laughs> from a D'Amico. Yeah. He got D'Amico number two, so from a... GMC standpoint, uh, you got the two best right out there tonight. All right, so on that first play, uh, Bryce McMurtry had a, did a nice job of Bryce busting a tackle and getting five yards out. It looked like it was going to be a negative play initially. So, so let's, let's see if the Falls can sustain a drive here and answer that uh, Brookfield East score here uh, to take the lead. So the Big Bell is up front, got to dominate. Give those big play guys the chance to uh, bust one open here. So second and five. Beckhart takes it right up there. He's going to get outside. Nope, that's El Monte. Got some room. If he can break that tackle and get up, upside. Oh, got him. Nope, he's got him by the jersey there. People were looking for a little horse collar, but it looked like a jersey pull. Yeah, it was definitely a jersey one, but it got him the first down. Nice job uh, by El Monte. He sees that it's all jammed up in there, gets to the outside. 14 does a nice job. And, you know, and, and to the credit of El Monte, too, you notice that when he did the uh, face you know, guard, if you will. He didn't actually grab onto it, so it wasn't a face mask penalty. It was just pushing that helmet away so that he could get the, that, get that first down. Showed nice strength there to get the defender off of him. So first and ten. Beckhart back to pass. is going deep. Oh, he's wide open. Oh, my goodness. He missed him for a touchdown there. Um, no. Yeah, McMurtry was wide open. I think... And maybe this is what's been going on. They've been kind of setting up, setting up, setting up, and then boom, all of a sudden the safeties are up. And, oh, my goodness, so close. Uh, McMurtry, I think it might have slipped coming out of the break there, but uh, an opportunity there, a big play. Uh, uh, Brookfield East just kind of gets away with one there. So, all right, so let's see what the falls. We'll come back to that play maybe later. But it's now it's going to be second down and ten. And if you notice, that, that play of the wideouts coming back to receive the handoffs and stuff, that's actually both teams are using that. All right, so Al Monte is just a host of East defenders. Brings him down after a short game of a couple yards, so it's going to be third and about eight yards to go. We're down to two minutes, 25 seconds to go in the third period. This game is all knotted at 14 here. What a football game we're seeing here tonight, and just a beautiful evening. Game being brought to you by Falls Cable Access Channel 14. Fine crew, producer Harry Stetzel. So third and long for the Indians. Beckhart rolling to his right. He's going to get a little pressure. He throws it up there, and it's knocked down, almost intercepted there by uh, Brookfield East, so Falls fortunate. Well, an intended receiver, Brady Schneider, and he was, he was open for a moment, but then there were about three or four white shirts that kind of got in the way. A sprint right, he steps and throws, strong throw, but again, two guys very in close position almost made an interception. Yeah, he stood, he stood there. He got to go back to get that ball there, and, you know, help out uh, Veckard a little bit, but so so it's going to be fourth and long for the Indians, so they're, uh, Brookfield East does a nice job on defense. It's forcing a uh, punt by the Indians here. 
Russo back to punt. Get nice penetration there. Russo, that's a nice punt. Hits it right over the top. Oh, that's the ball is hit. This ball is loose. We're going to see if he can pick it up. He's fumbling it again. The ball is loose again. Oh, my goodness. That's a scrum down there. I think he's got it. Yeah, I think he's got it Oh, that back. was an opportunity that just About slipped away. About the nine-yard well. line, it looks like. Boy, that was uh, pretty exciting. Great. Starts with a great punt. Actually, Russo did an excellent job. Look at this. He just punches this baby, and then it gets a little air underneath it, and it totally misjudges it. So number 14, uh, Chad Klinder, Klunder, um, kind of plays with it, tries to pick it up. And see, in there, remember we talked before about Almonte just falling on the ball? Well, he didn't fall on the ball. He tried to pick it up, make something happen, and that's what the risk that you run. All right, so it's important now that falls keep him down here, pin him back here. No big plays, so there he Whoa. is. Weber's going to sack. A nice play by Ty Weber. <laughs> I, 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 the camera work is so awesome because we get this Ty Weber. You know, it's just like he's so shocked to see Ty Weber in his face after he does the fake handoff. It's like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> then Weber. it's like, and I think I will tackle this person. <laughs> nice job by Ty Weber there yeah, for a great job. So it's going to be five yard loss. So they're pinned deep in their territory. So the Falls has got to keep them back there. So let's see if we can keep pressure up. D'Amico's standing right at the goal line. Back to pass. He's rolling out to his right. He's coming this way. He's getting pressure. He's going to throw it out of bounds. Who's there? Nobody there. Uh, there's 11 kind of in the neighborhood. So Falls does a nice job there. So it's going to bring up third and about 15. Brookfield East pinned deep in their own territory. Yeah, he's pump faking, pump faking, coming to the right there. Yeah, he's only about 25 yards short of the receiver. <laughs> All right, so this is a key play I hear late in the third quarter here, Bill, with third down and long. The Falls can hold them. They'll get great field position here. Got to contain D'Amico so he doesn't bust out any runs. So, on this play. I can see D'Amico feeling like he's got to make something for happen. Sutton. He's yeah. looking for Sutton there. Looking, 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 looking. Here we go. He's up. It's going to be short. It's just at the, like the 10-yard line. So, it's going to be a punning situation. So, the, the Falls defense answers the call here. Nice job of coverage. Keeps the pressure on the quarterback. Doesn't let him get away. Yeah, the cut back. Nice tackle again. Boy, I tell you, that was the Ty Weber series right there. Big, big sack on the quarterback. Great coverage there. Limits the uh, the yardage. All right, let's see if we can get a return here by from El Monte or Bryce McMurtry. Uh, nobody jump off sides here, gentlemen. So... They're letting the clock run down here, so we're going to uh, start the fourth quarter here, just like we started the first quarter. It's all knotted up, 14 all. So the, that final quarter, Bill, is going to be the determining factor here. So Menominee Falls 14, Brookfield East 14. And, and to East's credit, you know, they're the only ones who scored in the quarter, and traditionally Falls has a great third quarter. Traditionally, they have that, and that didn't happen. So give Brookfield East credit. They knotted it all up, tied it up, so now the pressure is it comes down to, you know, your last uh, 15 minutes of, uh, of game time. And in a sense, it's like you're just starting. It's just you're beginning the game all over again. Well, I'm sure the coaches are all going to remind everybody here that, you know, guys, we got one more quarter here. Take control of this game, and let's let's take control of our own destiny here. There we got a shot of Gordon, our fine crew down there on the sideline. Gordon Kirchhoff, right in front of the coach Baker. Our TV crew, Blake, Charles, Mike, Joe, Gordon, and then Harry Stetzel in the truck. Brought to you by Falls Cable Access Channel 14. Harry's kind of the producer, the director, the uh, <laughs> what, uh, the creative director. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so doing a lot of things over there for us. So, all right, so uh, on the goal line, punter for Connor Allen, see if he can get a good punt off here. So let's make sure we field this McMurtry or El Monte. So kind of uh-oh, we got something going on here. All right, redo. What's he got? I don't think they were ready for him to snap the ball. Yep, yep. No play, play ball with an okay, so we're just going to just do it, you know, no harm, no foul. So we're 
we're gonna have to reset that reset the clock here uh, yep to uh, 12 minutes I think see if the officials catch that because this is the first play of the fourth quarter no time there you go so they're they're catching it now so 12 minutes to go Nice. When I said 15 minutes before, that's what it showed on our thing there. It should be 12. I was thinking that's a little bit too long of a quarter. All right, so let's see what... Uh, it's a do-over, by the way. All right, oh, that's a nice punt. Nice punt. So it's going to be fielded by El Monte. He's got some, got some opportunity there. He's going to get through that there. Sneak through there. He's still busting loose. El Monte, just get down there. That's great field position on the 30-yard line. Hey, you know, and that's a, that's a good 22-yard return, I, I would guess, right there. And El Monte, very patient but quick to the point of attack. Very, very good. Very nice punt, as you point out. El Monte kind of takes it off. Right off the bat oh, it's here. actually 40. Yeah, it gets on the 45 and then sees the gap, sees the opening, heads right up there, attacks, makes a miss. Breaks a couple tackles Spins, in that series and then a host of... Almost a second miss. Takes about three guys to get him down. All right, so in this field position, Bill, it's going to be very important for the Indians here to punch something in and get some points. There's Beckhart turning it right up, but he's stuffed by a host of Spartans for just a small game. Now, did you notice... They totally gave the whole different look. Watch this. Now, uh, if we saw the beginning of that, it's actually like going back to the old times. It was, it's that full house backfield, everybody in tight, double tight ends, full house backfield. There wasn't anybody running motion or anything like that from the from the sidelines or anything like that. It was pretty pretty intense. All right, so we've got Derek Johnson down here to the right side. Beckhardt in the shotgun. Murtry in motion. They're going to hand it up. No, Veckhardt's going to take that. He's going to try to slip through that tackle. And he breaks a tackle, and he's able to get up very close to the first down. So a nice run by quarterback Adam Veckhardt's going to bring up third down and short. You know, and when you look at that, and because of the, our great camera shots that we're getting tonight, you can see he's got to make, you know, minute decisions. Boom, right there. Nope, you can't have it. I'm going to keep it. Okay, got to get to the outside. He dives to the left, gets past 54 there, and then... Really, they have to hustle to be able to pull him down. If he doesn't get him, if 42 doesn't pull him down, uh, he could he could have really made some steps of Matt Noonan on that tackle. All right, so it's third and short. Beckhart right up the middle there is going to punch it up there. Let's see if it's enough for the first down. Looks like it's it's close. Looks like it's going to be a first down. Menominee falls just inside the 20 yard line. So, all right. So, uh oh. A little correct. You're talking about that extracurricular there with uh, Christian Amante. There. It's been going on all night. Yeah, I mean, it, there's. It's amazing. At some particular point, they're going to call it. They're going to, you know, talk about contact after the whistle was blown. All right. So it's first and ten on the twenty yard line for the Indians. We've got a little over ten minutes to go in this Greater Metro Conference matchup. We're all knotted up at fourteen all. Oh, that's a reverse to McMurtry. They got a lead blocker out there. See if he can get to turn it up, young fella inside the 10 yard line so that's a nice play by the Indians on first and 10 for another first down and how many falls so you go to the pistol you get the you get the kick the the, the uh, hike right to El Monte and then El Monte hands it off for the reverse like you said McMurtry again reads the blocks well gets up there gets taken down by three guys but after a really nice gain first down nice job by the big horses up front Bill they've given him room there so nice call by offensive coordinator Jamie Doyle so it's first and goal for the Indians. That's a handoff right, right up the middle to El Monte, I think. No, it's actually it snapped snap right to him, yeah. Beck El Monte gets it right away. Beckhart was the lead blocker. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Here he is. Yeah, right there. Boom, he's pushing his way, trying to find a little room there and pushes it down to about the five-yard line, it looks like. And, you know, you gotta you got to give it to Beckhart. You know, 165-pound senior quarterback, just giving it everything he's got to try to be the lead blocker. <laughs> Good job. Good job, Adam. All right, so it's second down and goal just inside the five for the Indians. Beckard in the gun. Almonte right behind him in the traditional tailback. There. Oh, they a little confusion there. Yeah, there, yep. El Almonte is going to see if he can find some room. Tuck it in there. He's going to rumble down just, just inches away from the goal line, looks like. So it's going to bring up third and about a foot, it looks like. We'll see where they mark that ball. 
So again, in high formation, El Monte gets the handoff. This gives him a little bit of a running at the line there, so he can kind of see where the gaps are and stuff, and almost, almost gets in there. If they don't have three guys on him, he's in. All right, so it's third and goal from about the one for the Indians here. Beckard in the gun. Let's see what he's going to do here. He snaps it right to Lamonte. He's going to plunge in there for touchdown. Menominee falls. So the falls takes advantage of that field position and punches it in from 30 yards out. Christian Almonte. And, you know, big play. You talk about Almonte gets the good punt return, and then he gets the chance to punch it in. Sees that goal line dives and a touchdown. Christian Almonte. So, all right, big extra point here for Anthony Russo to take a... 20, see if they can get a seven point lead here with a little over eight minutes remaining. Russo will hold the snap. That's, that, that kick is blocked. The guy came in from the left side. That's a big play by the Indians not to get the block and convert that extra point. That's a, that could be huge. You hate to say it with 821 left. Now more than ever, it's important to make sure that you do not at any expense let Brookfield East Spartans score a touchdown because then they have the chance to go ahead and won't be a lot of time left after uh, they're done if they get an offensive series together. All right, so the Indians here to see what their defense can do, come out and shut them down and get the ball back. So field position here will be a key. So let's get nice coverage. So again, with 8 minutes 21 seconds to go, the Indians score but fail on the extra point. So it's 20 to 14. Nominee falls ahead of Brookfield East here in this greater Metro matchup. You know, and give it to the offense. It was a, it was a good offensive series. You know, they only had to go about 35, 40 yards to be able to, you know, get in that position and everything else. But, hey, they put points on the board. They've got the lead. Shows that they're uh, fired up and ready to go. And All right, so let's make sure everybody on the special teams, this kickoff team is ready to go. Gets, in, gets good coverage. Russo to kick. Nice kick by Russo. Kicks it over there to East Field about the 10 yard line. Oh, there's a there's some yellow hankies coming out. He breaks through there. So let's see what we've got on the penalty flag. Ball's out to the 40 yard line. Hopefully we've got a penalty. Yeah, you had a, there was a flag at the 40. <laughs> and that's where the actual uh, tackling took let's place. Let's see if we can get the signal here. We've got maybe a hold back here. There it looks like they're pointing. Block in the back. Yeah, there's the big one. Yeah, well, the the back official just threw it kind of like where he was anticipating the uh, end of the play was going to be. Dontrell Handy, number five, makes the tackle, but with the block in the back, it's going to push the Spartans back. All right, so uh, they don't have good field position, so we'll see if the Falls defense can stand up here and control the. East offense, give the ball back and see if we can eat a little clock. All right, D'Amico, first and ten. Oh, there he is, he's got room. Oh, he steps over a guy, it's almost ten yards. Yeah, definitely read that one well, taking a page from Adam, Adam Veckart. Fakes the handoff. Well, Bill, right now in this situation, you know, this is where we can come up with a turnover down here. That'd be huge for the defense. We'll see if they can answer. Absolutely. All right, so it's second down and short. Ball's just inside the 30 for East. Sutton in motion. D'Amico takes that hand up. Now he's going to take it. I think he's going to try to take this himself and take control. Yeah, I, I really, I, I mean... It's one of those things where you got to have at least one person just shadowing him because even though he's looking like he's going to fake off, you can tell he's already looking to the hole. He, he knows he's keeping it and he's going to go. Well, he's a playmaker and he's wanting to make something happen. Yeah. So, all right, we've got an injured player. Uh, one of the linemen for East looks like tried to get off the field but couldn't. Number 55. Yeah, I was looking at 55 a little bit earlier. That's Jack Linovitz. 6'1", 205, only a sophomore, but I remember looking at him and saying, I, I can't believe he's 205 pounds, I just <laughs> can't, there is no way, and he's, you know, and, and, and once again, I always know football coaches are very good at uh, 
Adding weight. Adding <laughs> weight and height, because I am also not convinced, based on the other tall people standing around him, that he's actually six foot one. But, <laughs> you know. All right, so we, so it's going to be first and ten for the Spartans. The ball just inside the 35-yard line here with seven minutes to go, a little over seven minutes to go in the final period. D'Amico checking his card there. That's a pass out here to Sutton. Oh, well, that's... Oh, nice job by that. They've got a nice duo there with uh, D'Amico to Sutton. They do a nice connection there, and another first down for the Spartans. Yeah, you can tell this is great fake, and he, this was a setup all the way. Sutton is just waiting out there in the flat to be able to catch this ball and then work it up the field. Ball almost came loose there, so the ball is on the 45-yard line. First and 10. D'Amico in the shotgun, sitting in motion, hands it off right here to Lloyd, Santiago Lloyd, for virtually no gain. That one's a keep him honest one, Bill. Yeah, absolutely, and notice that he's actually caught from behind. So this is, because he kind of bounces out, and then 54 comes right up there, Cody Marenthal. Yeah, he was on, on the quarterback, and then he hustled and came back and made the tackle from behind as you mentioned. Yeah, that's the kind of pursuit that you need and it's uh, second down now. Right in front of us here, D'Amico is going to roll to the right. He's look, uh, yeah, but there's no question who he's looking for out there. Number, That's number four, 14 though. That's Chad Poolander. So uh, another first down for the uh, Spartans. So. Uh, East, Spartans. Is, East is not panicking. They're being very methodical. They realize, and, and yet, uh, to your point, we were talking before about the fact that, oh, we were kind of wondering if all of a sudden it was going to be the D'Amico show. They're mixing it up nice. He's throwing the ball a little bit. He's panning it off a few times. It's not a desperation offense at this point. Paul's defense needs to keep him out of the end zone here because that failed extra point. Oh, we got two guys in motion. There's a lot. That's that, that, a fumble. That's a fumble. That ball is loose. And that's the foul that uh. picked it up. <laughs> Tom Paul picks that ball up. I think we'll decline the penalty. What do you think, Bill? <laughs> I, I'm thinking that's probably not a bad idea. That is a huge play by the defense there. We had two guys going in motion. Confusion on the east. They fumble the ball. And number 28 for the Indians. Tom Paul. Yeah. Tom Paul picks it up. Here we go. This is a total confusion. Again, you said two, two people in motion. That's illegal. Now the ball, I mean, I've never seen a ball so out there and available, but quick thinking on Paul's part, heads out there, and, you know, again, if it wasn't for the athleticism that uh, that obviously Zach D'Amico shows, they, he might have had a touchdown there. Okay, so right now, Bill, Nominee Falls has an opportunity to, you know, turn out the lights possibly if they can run some clock and convert a touchdown and take away that mixed extra point here, but, so it's... Right there to Almonte. He's kind of looking for some spots. Get out! Oh, he's going to get outside. He's going to catch a block. He's going to run over a couple guys. He's still rumbling. First down, Christian Almonte. That's a tough run. That's a tough run. He, you know, he's making a serious effort to try to hit that first hole. He gets the snap directly. He looks and he sees it's all clogged up, and he says, "Hey, I bet you there's some room out here." And obviously, he runs out everybody. Brad Carstens, uh, the uh, outside, probably either linebacker or. or uh, uh, D-back uh, wasn't able to contain him, and all of a sudden he's got a first down. Or actually, just second. Down. Second down and two. About nine yards on that one. So, falls on the 15-yard line. Almonte on the pitch. He's going to turn that thing up and get this first down here. Let's see if he can get it. Nope. Whoa. All right, so I don't know if we want to be running out of bounds, though. Clock keeps running, though, until yeah. two minutes, or probably, in this high school. That is interesting. I would have thought. No, the clock stops. The clock, clock stops. stops. Okay, yep. uh, we're not matched up, I guess, with that one. Yeah, we've got five minutes, four seconds to go. Yeah, the only way that yeah, the clock should stop when he gets out of bounds. All right, so third. Okay, big play here, Bill. It's third down now. Yeah, but you're in four down territory. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> well, well, what, or do they kick a field goal to go up more than seven? Nah, I think they keep it down here. Keep the ball. Monte's gonna yeah. push it up there, and he's gonna m rumble for the first down. Funny, there you go, the big fella. First down, the Indians about marches down about the six yard line. So, so we're under 
We've got four minutes, 58 seconds to go. It's first and goal for the Indians on about the seven or eight yard line. They're down at the other end, so the clock has started here. So if Menominee Falls can punch this in, Bill, that'll make a huge step towards... Yeah, to, to kind of sealing this, but I think the other thing is, you know, they don't have to score right this minute. <laughs> Eat some clock. <laughs> you know, get about a two-yard gain, get about a three-yard gain. Here's Almonte, Almonte left. Almonte looking like he's got some room there. He's busting some tackles. All right, so eating the clock. Takes it down to inside the five. 428 left here. So at the seven-yard line, so... Yeah, the, you know, this is clock management, but it's one of those things where, you know, you, if, you, if you tell the kids too much to kind of waste some time, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not necessarily a really good philosophy. You've right. got to be deliberate in, in your execution, and if, if something good happens like a score or you get a, get a good uh, opportunity to put right. the ball against All right, Monte in the shot, uh, Beckhart. And we get a timeout, I think, by the falls here at the end. They really weren't happy with the, the formation or the call. So they're going to get a timeout. Menominee Falls. So I think it's a good. Uh, Coach Baker wasn't comfortable with that. You know, this is a big play here because it's going to be second and goal from about the seven-yard line, and they want to try to eat clock as you mentioned. But boy, I'd just love to see him punch it in here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That could seal it. Now let's just let's think about it while we're, Coach Baker's thinking about the play. So let's say that Menominee Falls isn't able to convert this first down, and they're on about the four-yard line. So do they bring in the field goal kicker and try to go up? by nine points, kind of seal that? Um, I'm going to take a wild guess that because they believe in their run game, because they believe in El Monte, I think they punch it in. I think they're going to go for the, I don't think they're going to go for the field goal, but I could be wrong. All right, well, we're, we're going to find out here in yeah. a few minutes if they don't punch it in, but for all those Falls fans, that we want them to punch it in here, so take a little right. from that standpoint. So Christian Amante here and Adam Beckhart, so we'll see. Maybe uh, maybe it's Bryce McMurtry. They're going to bring out a little trickery play here. Well, and here's a question for you. Let's imagine they score. Do you go for two? Uh, they, they, sh they should because they, yeah, yeah, they might have to be a two-touchdown lead because a yep. touchdown a field goal, so yep. they would need to do that. So hopefully uh, they got a two-point conversion play. So all right, so we've got... Set the stage here. You got two guys wide to the right. Beckhart in the gun. Almonte right behind him. They hand it right up the middle up to Almonte. He's rumbled in He's there. That's in. a touchdown. Yeah. We, we get the signal. Touchdown. Menominee falls. They punch it in after a big turnover forced by the defense. So Menominee falls. Takes a lead. 26-14. They're so going to go for They're it. going for two. Yeah, they're going to go for two. All right. So 26-14. Almonte follows his blockers. Hey, you know, you, you got to look at that. When 67, Jackie DeWalt does not get anybody to block, you got to figure. <laughs> you got to figure Almonte's got a great chance of getting in there. All right, nice block by number 32, Will Roche, Rocher, too. He was the leading in the, leading the pack here. So, all right, so it's Falls going for two here, leading 26 14 to try to go up by 14. That's Veckhart rolling to his right. He's looking to his right, looking to see if he can pass. He's going to tuck it down. He's going to just kind of throw it up there. Oh, almost deflected. So falls and able to convert here, but at 26 to 14. Yeah, that 12-point lead still doesn't make you. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd like to have 14, yeah. but so we've got three minutes, 49 seconds to go here. That's and a lot of time. Well, and you got a big playmaker with D'Amico. Yeah. So it's going to be important that the falls... Uh, kickoff team does a nice job of coverage and don't let him get in good field position. Brady Schneider is coming up limping there. Get the feeling his foot was stepped on. It. That's just based on the way he's kind of jumping around. And all right. Did you ever notice a type of injury kind of determines how the body kind of, you know, if you get stepped on, it's jumping. If you have a sprained ankle, you're going down. If you have a broken arm, you just kind of don't touch me. I don't. <laughs> you know, it's. All right, so right now here, you know, the, the Falls has done everything they've needed to do so far, Bill, in this game. You know, they're yeah. up 26 to 14. Now they just need to close this thing out here, and that'll set the stage. I'm going to assume that Marquette is going to win this evening. It'll set up a showdown of two 5-1 uh, and one teams for the conference championship. It, it looks right now like that's going to be the case, and 
you gotta you gotta kind of figure that the, it's going to be a tough match. I'm trying to see if I can quickly find out. I think uh, let's see, Greater Metro. Let's see, I'm trying to find out uh, who who uh, Marquette's playing tonight. I think it was Hale or Central. All right, so it's going to be important here for Anthony Russo here to get a nice yeah. kick and good coverage. So we got three minutes, 48 seconds to go. Menominee Falls leading 26 to 14 over Brookfield East. Yeah, pretty much central at Marquette. You're absolutely right. That's uh, unless Marquette has a major falling out, it's going to. Oh, that's gonna a, be, uh, not a very good kick. It's going to give East just wonderful field position, all the way up to the 40-yard line. So Russo, I don't think that was intentional. Didn't do a good job on that one. So. Puts East in favorable field position here to try to get back in this game. Yeah, I, that was, I almost get the feeling they were attempting to put it someplace, but it wasn't where they wanted it to be. All right, so we've got three minutes, 42 seconds. So let's see what Brookfield East, it's definitely a passing situation for East. So hopefully Menominee Falls is going to, their defense be back. So we'll get some coverage. D'Amico going back, rolling to his right. Throws it out to number three for the Spartans. First down, 49-yard line. Perez, so it's first down, so it's going to be a hurry-up offense. And really, when you think about it, they've always been in the hurry-up. <laughs> you know, matter of fact, the fact that they're in the huddle right now is actually pretty rare because yeah. usually they're calling it right from the line of scrimmage. Yeah, so they're going to have to pick the pace up here a little bit, but they do have plenty of time because if they could get a score, then certainly we'd see an onside kick. All right, so D'Amico going back to pass. Okay, passes over the side. It's going to be incomplete. Nice coverage over there by... I don't think anybody... I don't think I've ever seen anybody hit the marker better than that. <laughs> it was actually right on that, you know, target circle, right on the top of that uh, marker. Here it is. Oh, bingo. A little bit lower than that. All right. All right, so it's second. Defending on the plate, Tom Paul. Should be second down, I think. Not first down. All right, D'Amico rolling back here, passes over. That's going to be a nice tackle by Ty Weber. Yeah, you got to wonder, though. You're absolutely right. I wonder why it was still, why did they get two first downs? Now they got, now they got it. It's third down. They made so we never really had a third down on this one, a uh, second down. Yeah. <laughs> we just went from first to third. All right, so it's third and about six here for East. He's rolling to his right. Uh, Sutton looking out there. He's wide open, but yep. he makes the catch, and it's a first down. Oh, well. He can't fumble that ball forward, so, you know, he's just he's just kind of there. The two guys are kind of clearing out an area, and uh, Sutton's coming underneath there, right? and they're just dumping it to him. Yeah, just yeah they're actually blocking the uh, D-back that's in that corner over there so that they clear it out for Sutton. And actually, our guy was the guy that knocked it out from behind there. All right, it's key for the falls. Make sure that they eat up some time here. If the East is going to get in the end zone, they got to work for this and get some time off the clock. That's a... Pass out there is incomplete. Yeah, and see those incomplete passes and then getting out of bounds. This is a, like I said, what scares me a little bit about this is they're managing the clock very well. They understand about the sideline. They understand about the incomplete passes. Yeah, we got two minutes, 58 seconds to go here in the final period. In the Indians leading 26 to 14, but the Spartans are marching down here on the, about the 34-yard line. So we'll see if the defense can come up with another big play. Miko rolls to his left, looking down the field. Nothing there. He's going to turn it up and run, and he's going to run out of bounds and stop the clock again for a short game. Yeah, it's almost like if the if Falls could try to keep him in bounds, <laughs> that would help a little bit. Nice coverage though on by the secondary there. Yeah. D'Amico just couldn't find anybody to throw it to, so he tucks it in and runs out of bounds. So the ball is now uh, third down and eight. So a big, you know, they're in four down territory, obviously. So it's third and third and eight. So let's we'll see if the Falls can come up with a big play here on third down. Oh, let's get somebody in the flats because that's Sutton's going to get it. All right, D'Amico looking down there. Oh, that's knocked down by a nice play by an Indian there. It looks like number 35. 35. Yeah. That's Simcock, I think, for the Indians to so just get a fingernail on that. Tyler Simcock. We'll see if we can get it here. Yeah, he's, he's scrambling. Good pressure. Ooh, and boy, did he take <laughs> shot. D'Amico down. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he knew he was in the play for that one. Is that D'Amico that's down right now? Has to be. I can't imagine anybody else got tackled on that one back in that position. Yeah, 
Tyler Simcock right there, very close to either deflecting it or possibly making an interception. Okay, so Bill, who, let's see if who delivers the shot on him right there. Oh, yeah, it's actually it looks is that like Russo? 16. It's Russo. Russo yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me see here. Yep, Anthony Russo sticks his textbook tackle and throws him down there. So really, yeah, just kind of knocked the wind out of him a little bit. All right, so Bill, here's, this is the play of the ball game right here for and you got, the East. Yeah. yeah, and you got your. And you got your quarterback. Yeah. He's got to come out because they uh, came out to help him. All right, so they're going to bring in a six foot five offensive lineman to run the shotgun. <laughs> now. All right, so this is the play of the game here at the falls. It's fourth down and eight. The ball is on the 32 yard line. So if they don't get the first down, falls will take over possession and then we can the lights, the fat lady singing. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm trying to figure out who they put in as quarterback. It looks like Connor Allen, number 16. Yeah, he's the punter, punter and kicker. Yeah, yeah they, they listed him as a quarterback too. Quarterback, so. punter. Place kicker. All right, so he rolls to his right, getting a little pressure. He's throwing it deep. That's a nice ball, but that's it's going to be caught in the end zone for a touchdown. <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness! What's well, the chance that number 16, Connor Allen, comes in, no warm up, and throws a touchdown pass that's about 30 something yards? Well, I want to know how, why the defensive back Watch lets this. him get behind him. Right. Look at this. I mean, Sprints to his right. Nice throw, strong arm. Oh, number Holy 27, Marole gets beat. And this is this is your backup quarterback, number 11, great catch, Cole Larson, senior, 6'1". All right, so they're going to extra point here. So let's get. I hope the coaches are getting the hands team ready here because we're going to see an onside kick. So the kick is up. So it's things are tightened up. 26-21 here. So the the falls. Well, we're going to see an onside kick here, Bill, for it's sure. all about the possessions, right. So if the Falls can get this ball back here, 2.36 to go here. I'm trying to see if we can, uh, can't tell how many uh, timeouts are left. Two, two for the Falls and three for, three for East. Oh, right, there, you there you go. There you go. Okay, right. we got, yeah, two for Falls and three for East. All right, so obviously, and uh, you know, and so that means you know, technically, they could stop, you know, after every play. That's why Falls has not only got to catch, get this ball, but then they've also got to make sure that they get at least one first down. All right, so we've got the hands team in here. You've got uh, uh, looks like number ten for East T C Swiddle. I wonder if that's this coach's yeah, son. Yeah, I actually, I was thinking about that before I, I. He's don't a know quarterback, if but if nothing else, if he's a sophomore, and I know he caught a big ball last week in that, so it'll be interesting to see uh, any relation. That's fielded right there and covered up by Daniel Dolkey, number 81. So nice job by Menominee Falls. That was big. Oh, there's a flag. He's got a flag. We got a flag. I don't know what we. All right, so we'll see. We'll see, and shake it, it, it went 10 yards. I mean, it's at right at the 50 there, so that should be well, fine. Well, the, the Indians can feel that even inside that. So let's see. Maybe somebody he was down, and somebody piled on him for well, that, that would be this. that would be amazing yep. if well, after well, all of this yep. that's been going on, that on that last play they decide they're going to throw the flag for a late hit. Yeah, I think Dulkey was down, had covered it up, and somebody came in and you know had an opportunity to see him just laying there and just drilled him. So personal foul. Personal foul. That's a big penalty. So it's going to put the falls at the 35-yard line here. So with two minutes 34 seconds to go, the falls, like you mentioned, Bill's got a. You know, they got a bunch formation here. So see what happens here. It's Beckard takes the handoff, protecting it, runs it up there middle, it's inside the 30-yard line. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. See, we're getting a little bit, little bit little bit chesty and but, punchy but, there. And, and I, you heard me say this earlier in the game. If they don't take care of this, it's going to get ugly towards the end, and that's exactly what happened. So you're going to get late hits. You get the frustration now. Kids are kids. Yep. There you'll see be it. another 15 yard right here. Now watch Comes this. Comes in there, 42. Boom, got that. Yep, yep, 42. Nice job by number 54, Marenthal, not to react, too. Right, right. So I'm sure Coach Baker's telling them, just calm down. Take control of this. So, uh, nice job by the Falls offense here. So, with two minutes twenty-seven seconds to go, man, if let's just punch this thing in here and put the lights out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they need this one. If they can put the put this one in the end zone, 
uh, with another touchdown, I think that you're absolutely right. It's going to be impossible for them to come back. But we've said that before, and we'll look at their knocking at the door with only five points down. All right, so important that the, uh, the guys cover up that ball. All right, so we've got... Oh. Beckhart back there, back in the backfield, number 42 for the Indians, Ben Knudsen. I guess he's going to be blocking for Beckhart going to the right. This formation looks like it to me. All right. Running some clock. There it is. Beckhart just taking it up the middle. Yep. Just, a, just kind of like the Packer sweep there. They got four or five guys just pushing it. So East is going to get a timeout here with a minute and 52 seconds to go. And they used to call this student body right. <laughs> it's just everybody on that right side pushing everybody as deep as they possibly can. All right, so Falls has got... All right, so let's set the stage here again now, Bill. So you don't really have to get a touchdown here. You want to need some clock. But so they, it's, it's fourth and just falls in, try to kick the field goal to go up by eight. Make Yeah, I, I guess, you know, philosophically, I just know how much Coach Baker really believes in the run game and especially in a big game like this and I could see them just kind of continuing to run and run and run until they don't have any more downs and even if they you know give them the ball on the one yard line or something like that it's going to be really hard for the other team to score I just know they believe in their line they believe in their running backs they believe in Beckhart and, and I, I can't imagine that they would just simply say okay let's take the chance that we're going to snap it the holder's going to hold it right the kicker's going to kick it right and everything's going to go good I I think they, they like having their hands on that ball. They did get an extra point box. They did? So that may take yeah. into consideration. Yeah, from that exactly. Place. All right, so it's uh, student body right again here. So I think we're going to see Beckhart going to the right. They're going to tuck this thing in there and just eat some clock up. They're just going to push it, keep pushing, pushing. All right, so East is going to get another quick timeout here. And this is probably their last, right? Should have one more, I think. Yeah, you're right. They, they're down to one. So it's going to be third down and about six yards. So, again, I, I think they'll be forced to take the timeout on this next one, okay, with about oh, a minute and 30 seconds to go. So then, the Bill, the Falls could run that next play mm -hmm. uh, and get it to under maybe a minute or so, but a change of possession, if they don't get the first down, would stop the clock as well. So right. they'd have to march it about 90 yards in uh, about a minute. So this has been one heck of a ball game here on the Greater Metro Conference Championship. The Falls is done a nice job in what they've had to do uh, winning, uh, leading 26 to 21 uh, minute and 40 seconds to go and, and perfect world what you'd really love to do is get a first down but not a score there you go. <laughs> <That's> exactly <laughs> alright so I think we're going to get the same play again uh, looks like this has been the same formation each time we got all the big guys to the right that cart's going to take it take the snap oh there's a reverse, yeah, reverse. McMurdy going to mix them up but Virtually snuffed that one out, tried to mix them up. So another timeout. So it's going to be fourth down. Got a minute 40 seconds, minute and 40 seconds to go, Bill. Interesting point. Did you notice where he went down? Are they setting up for the they're field goal? Setting, they're, they are, at least that's going to be here, an option. Here now. comes Russo right because now. Because yep. he's not on a hash mark now. He sees he's right between the two hash marks. So if you were thinking field goal, that gives you that good option there. Well, Anthony Russo is in the game here. Yep. So Russo is going to try to kick the field goal here to send the falls up 29-20 with an eight-point lead. So this is very big, very big. Yep. So we're going to try to spot the ball. It's going to be about at the 15-yard line. So it's going to be about a 25-yard field goal by Russo. I think that's within his range. Definitely. But I, I think what Coach Baker is probably talking about to the line at this particular point is you got to hold them. No more getting them, letting them in there. No more letting them uh, deflect this one. This one, give Russo the chance to, to punch it through. Okay, the holder, Zach Kornberger. Russo getting set. So we'll see what the Falls can do here on this 25-yard field goal here late in the game. Snap the hold. Russo, the kick is up, and the kick is... Good for Menominee Falls. So Russo kicks that through there to take a eight point eight lead. Eight point lead, which uh, means <laughs> that yep. if they score and go for two and make it, they're still in the ball game. All right, so here we go. Yep. Yeah, no so timeouts, the, right? So it's going to be vital here that the uh, Indians get good coverage here. That's the big. That's probably one of the most important plays here. If they can pin them back and 
and make them march 70 or 80 yards uh, certainly takes time. So we've got a minute 35 to go. We talked about a whale of the ball game. Yeah. Boy, this has been a great game. Yeah, it's a great game to watch, great, great game to announce. And <laughs> yep, so here we go. Menominee falls up by eight with a minute 35 against Brookfield. East Spartans. All right, so let's see what uh, strategy they take here. Last time, Russo tried to do a little pooch kick or something. I mean, just uh, I don't think he's got the leg to uh, put it in the end zone, but let's, let's put, it, put it back over here on the 10 and yeah. uh, get some good coverage, tackle. I'm sure that the special teams coach let these guys know, let's get down and get good coverage on this one. So, All right, Anthony Russo to kick to Brookfield East here. Oh, he does come to squib. Well, right there. Uh-oh, he jumps over a tackler. Going to get good field position. Tackled by number five for the Indians. That's uh, Dontrell Handy on the tackle. So we've got, they're going to have to march at 61 yards here with a minute and 30 seconds to go, Bill. Well, assuming that D'Amico is not injured from that last play, when he when, remember when he wasn't able to come in and play that fourth down, you know, you gotta you gotta think this is uh, still kind of a scary moment. Yeah, see, he's back in the game. All right, Johnny so Unitas, number 19, still in the ball. All right, so Paul's defense there. Keep those safeties back. He's rolling to his left. He's looking out there to uh, nope. Is incomplete. Out of bounds. Thrown out to number three. That was Dominic Perez, but incomplete. Okay, he did catch the ball. If he would have been in bounds. Miko rolling, puts it in there, nice catch, but doesn't get us out of bounds, so keep everybody in front of you, Bill. And from, a, and from a quarterback standpoint, that is one of the tougher throws to execute. You're running to your left, and you got to throw back across your body with your right hand. All right, there's D'Amico. Nobody gets in front of you. There you go. D'Amico throws it. That's incomplete again. All right, so it's third down and 10 with a minute and 17 seconds to go here. And do you put Connor Allen in? <laughs> <laughs> on, that's on fourth down. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. That's their fourth down play, yes. All right. All right, so we, we've got third and, and 10. Crucial play here for the Spartans. Keep it in front of you, everybody, here in this defensive backfield. There's, there's some motion. So we're going to take them back five. That's going to be a big five yards. Mm -hmm. so yeah, third and 15 is a little bit more challenging. Bill, as you mentioned earlier, Brookfield East has lost a little bit of their composure here on that last drive. Had a couple penalties there. They make a little penalty there. So they're not helping themselves. They're making it a little bit more difficult on uh, themselves offensively to try to punch this thing in and try to tie it up. All right, so third and 15, D'Amico's rolling to his right. There's Sutton's out there in the flat, catches it, but he's short, so it's tackled, and the clock is running. That's a great, great job at, by Weber to keep him in bounds. Right. So the clock is running. We're just about a minute to go here in the final period. Mahomet Falls leading 29-21. Fourth down, long eight. Okay, bit play of the game here. Let's see if D'Amico... He's going to try to pass and run. It's a catch and a pitch. He's tackled, but he's going to be stay in bounds. No, nope. no, nope. he's got out of bounds. So yeah. with 43 sec, 40. Yeah, they, it's not out of bounds. It's what they're first doing down. is they're, they're, yep. yeah, they first down, so they got to move the sticks. But then they're going to get it started right away. All right, 44 seconds to go. Okay, the clock is running. Oh, uh oh, uh oh, we got penalties. Yeah, they weren't uh, set. Well, a lot of suspense here, <laughs> yeah. Bill. We've got 38 seconds to go here. Well, it's happening fast. <laughs> no timeouts remaining for East. All right. So here we go. Ball's defense trying to keep him out of the end zone here. D'Amico back to pass is rolling to his left. He's looking down the field. It's completed. Oh, it's stuck. 
That's another first down with 28 seconds to go. So now, Bill, they're kind of down where we can't really see much of this, so we'll check on the monitor. Just keep them out of the end zone. Yeah. Paul's going to get a timeout, maybe. 25-yard line. I have no idea what that was. If they're taking a timeout, how come nobody's getting a drink? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. All right, so first down. Clock is... Did the Falls... I think the Falls 26. called a timeout or something. I'm not sure what this happened. Yeah, there. but then they didn't, they didn't take the timeout. All right, so here we go. It's 26. D'Amico rolling to his left. Oh, he's going looking deep. That's incomplete. That's incomplete. John that's a nice defensive play, but I, number three is complaining. I, I think he, he might have had something there because he got bumped a little bit when he tried to get up and go in the Falls defender. If you see this out here at number three, now we're not going to catch that, but kind of bumped him. I can't really see it there, but you know, at the end, the defender is going for the ball. So Number 14 for the Indians, Zach Merrill. All right, 20 seconds to go here. This is, this is the battle. Third down. Two more plays. Miko throwing it up there. It's incomplete. All right, so we got 15.4 seconds to go, and it's fourth and ten. So they got to get the first down here, or the, the ball game is over. So let's see if the Falls defense can stop them. The crowd's kind of getting into it. The, Everybody's setting on their hands behind the stands. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we go. Noise. D'Amico back to pass, rolling to his right, fakes that guy. He's gonna, he's gonna pass out there. He's caught. It's incomplete. Incomplete, out of bounds. In incomplete. So that's gonna be the ball game with six seconds to go. No, 3.4. 3.4. Okay, so Menominee Falls holds, and they're gonna win this game. That was huge. That was just huge. He would have caught that one in bounds. That would have been very interesting. They would have had at least one more, one more play punch yeah. into the end zone area. Inside the four or five yard line to it looked like, but he dropped here, it. There's our fans. Let's talk about the, the Falls fans. Uh, Athletic Director Ryan Anderson has done a great job of trying to make sure that it's about sportsmanship and about making sure the fans stay positive. And you see them all wearing the uh, maroon and, and gray. And uh, this is uh, an important time to teach people about how to act when you're winning and when you're maybe not winning. So. Okay, so Beckhart takes the snap and runs the clock out. So Menominee Falls wins this just battle this evening against Brookfield East. Menominee Falls 29. Brookfield East 21. So the Falls record now extends to 7 and 1, 5 and 1 in the Greater Metro. So they're tied for first place with Marquette. So this sets up the big showdown next week against Marquette right here at Menominee Falls. It's it's going to be just a classic matchup, I think. You know, Marquette has always always been competitive. Falls has always been competitive in the Greater Metro. And just wait, a, it's going to come down to that. You do kind of wonder what happened to Brookfield Central tonight. Probably, you know, they had, they weren't playing Marquette and they weren't playing Menominee Falls. So you figure they probably are also uh, going to be there and stuff. So probably a share there. There's Coach Swiddle. You can see him coming into the picture a little bit there. And again, great effort by Brookfield East. You got to hand it to the Spartans. They did a great job preparation. They did nice adjustments at halftime. Falls did a great job of uh, of doing what they needed to, capitalizing on the big turnovers and the big big plays in the second half uh, when they had to. Two fine football teams and a, and a fine football game tonight. So sorry, anybody has to go away a loser, but Menominee Falls comes out victorious. 29 to 21 again setting up that big showdown so uh, Falls Cable Access does another nice job of bringing us a great ball game yeah. here our fine crew there's Brent and Bill we're just <laughs> a small part of this but our fine crew of Joe Blake Gordon Mike and Charles all down there making us all look good so and our crew leader in the in the truck Harry Stetzel so there you see our crew so Bill you kind of your final thoughts on tonight's game leading up to next week in the big showdown between Marquette well I think it was a classic high school football game 
both teams well prepared, both teams working hard, trying hard, doing all the right things to make it an interesting game for the fans as well as for us as, as broadcasters. I think this is a game that people will want to watch <laughs> on replay here on channel, channel 14, Falls Cable Access, and that's why we do it. It's a, it's a lot of fun to do these. I enjoy working with you, Brent, and I know that what uh, people will see in terms of our broadcast, they're going to get a great opportunity to see a great high school football game. Well, from Menominee Falls High School, the Falls final score 29-21 with a victorious over Brookfield East. So they march into next Friday night for the battle for the conference championship against the Hilltoppers from Marquette. So for Brent Morris and Bill Hintz, good night everybody and go Falls and see you next week. Go Indians. <laughs>